Quiet on set, you damn kids. Who wants to make a short? We'll pay you an IMDb credits and experience. Lights, camera, action, it's I don't give a flick, your favorite film podcast, oh yeah. Tarantino, Mero, and Spielberg, here's looking at you, kid. We talk movies and TV shows, and sometimes other things we like. And no one's coming right at your fucking face, every minute of every day will never stop. We'll talk lenses, music, and foley. We'll understand the depth of field. We've got theories so out of this world and epic it'll blow off your fucking tits. Oh yeah, that was bullshit. (laughs) See, every time we have new guests that aren't jackass friends of ours they can hear us just fine no yeah. problem but every yeah. time we have buddies of ours come on and and talk about a a topic they're really passionate about or a film that they were really into they're like oh you're echoing and they just they kind of complain about it the whole time so I, I wonder if that's actually accurate that they can't really hear us very well or they're just trying to yank or chain yeah i don't know i don't, I don't know. know i'm not I sure think as, as as good friends as they are they must be sabotaging you guys <laughs> probably (laughs) that's probably true alec very very accurate very accurate hey everybody welcome to another episode of i don't give a flick i am your host johnny blackburn alongside me this week as he is every week for some reason even though nobody invites him back he just finds his way over the incomparable gary elmore well i was going to introduce you but go ahead and you took a really long pause steal my 10 seconds of thunder yeah you're a dick um uh and uh, unfortunately not joining us this week is neil riley he is traveling and will be with us in spirit hopefully we can get him on a guest call later while he is on the road uh we are very fortunate and extremely excited to be welcoming to the podcast for the first time uh, a slew of actors who have not joined us and welcoming back one gentleman who has not joined us since season one. Uh, we've got Akasha Villalobos, who is a Texas-based actress uh, located out of Austin. Uh, Akasha, welcome to the show. So happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for inviting me. Of course, absolutely. Uh, we've also got uh, Alec White, an actor. And now, Alec, I, I am correct. You are You are based out of Cali. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Gareth, Absol- for having me. It's Absolutely, man. So so happy to have you. So happy that we were able to get you uh, at the at the very last minute. Really, this was kind of a impromptu episode, which I guess we're we're notorious yeah, for doing at this that, point. That's our modus operandi. Yeah. You know. I mean, I think Carlton, uh, our next guest, can attest to that. I've certainly asked him uh, two hours before we start recording. Hey, we want to do an episode. <laughs> want to come on? Um, <laughs> that's just how we roll, man. And welcoming back to the show, Texas-based actor, uh, international superstar. Carlton Cottle. Carlton, welcome back once again. Hey, thanks, guys. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so for tonight's episode, or I guess today's, first time ever we're doing a day episode. Not uh, a fan. Not G- a fan. Way I, too early. Yeah, Gary's like, I'm not a fan. Uh, we're both night owls. I woke up about an hour ago, and I've had my cup of coffee, so I'm good. Gary, you look a little groggy. Are it's, you doing it, okay? It's going to be a day, Johnny. Okay. It's going to be a day. Yeah. We're, we're marathoning out uh, today. Um, for those of you that, that listen to us on a consistent basis, you know that I will be leaving on a uh, a bit of a uh, – my, ver- my version of Eat, Pray, Love, I suppose, over the next mm-hmm. six months to a year. Um, so a we are journey not – journey of self-discovery. journey of self-discovery and self – Reflection. Sure. Okay. And self – Self – Touching. Preservation. Self touching. Yeah. Well, yeah what? You know. where, okay. Where are you going, Johnny? Uh, I am actually going uh, going towards the East Coast. Uh, I'm just going to go see family and friends. Um, going to jump over to Tennessee, then head into the Carolinas. Um, I got work set up in Atlanta, um, so I got I got a film out there I'm going to go work on. I'm going to go to New York for a bit. Um, I'll actually go up and I'll, I'll be visiting like a, like Schnick and um, mm. uh, there are a couple other friends up there. I got a buddy that does uh, TV work, so I'm going to jump on with him. Um, yeah, and then there's not really an itinerary for it. You know, there's no schedule. I kind of just... I had always wanted to just take a trip like this and wing it. You know, I have some money saved up. I want to work while I'm going, stay with family and friends, and then I'll make my way across to the West Coast and then make my way down to L.A. And we'll see what happens. You know, I might stay. I might I might not. I don't know. So Mm. we'll 
We'll certainly be doing shows from the road, that is for sure. Um, but we wanted to go ahead and uh, knock out a bunch today. So Gary and I, and hopefully Neil at some point during the day, will be coming to you live for about 12 hours straight with about five, six different episodes. Um, and we'll be backing those up for well, probably about two months worth of content. Yeah. Give or take. Yeah. yeah something like about that. roughly. Yeah. Something like that. So, uh, so excited to get into it. For sure. Um, let's jump in. Today's episode is actors that took it too far on set and off set in front of the camera and behind it. Uh, and then we'll be debating uh, method versus technical or classical acting. Versus? Uh, I'm sorry. Voices technical. Did I say voices? You did. I meant verses. Okay. Yeah. I've only been up for an hour. Yeah. yeah. Voices okay. versus. You you seem like you're okay because you're being a, a bit more of a of a douchebag than yeah. normal. You know, I, I I took some uppers to get ready for the show. So I don't believe you. I'm I'm good. You're you're not really you're not really the the drug kind. You know. You know. That's just how. What I type roll. of uppers are we talking about? Or. Oh, see, see, you're a liar. I, uh, I know you are because you would have answered yeah. immediately. Your Flintstones your, vitamins. Flintstones vitamins. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Snort, snorting those, by the way, really, really very painful. Wrecks your nasal cavity yeah. for sure. He's a, he's a method DJ. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so for this episode, uh, I did want to go ahead and give uh, all three of our actors uh, a opportunity to go ahead and introduce themselves and give us a brief kind of rundown about. Uh, what you've done, what you're up to right now, maybe what you've done recently that uh, the, uh, a project that you really want to hang your hat on that maybe people have seen, or maybe you want to go ahead and encourage our listeners to go ahead and take a look or a gander at your project. Um, so Akasha, I do want to start with you. Um, so the oh. last time Akasha and I got to work together was on a feature film called Trip about a year and a half ago. Um, so I don't know what you've been up to since then, or um, why don't you give our uh, <laughs> listeners a little intro about yourself? Sure. Well, since then, I've been uh, on lockdown. <laughs> That's right. I guess it was right before quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yes. I uh, Johnny uh, is actually went to high school with my brothers. Is that correct? Well, I went I to... Kind of. I went to I went to conservatory or college, I guess, if you want to call it that. Oh, you um, went to college. OK, right. that's right. I went with right, Schnick, right. Cruz and Marty and all. I went to McLennan and I met Polaris McLennan. and Hilarion <laughs> through them my freshman year at some parties. And then through that, we just. Kind of uh, yes. Down. OK, yeah. so my brothers did not go to McLennan, but their their besties did. Got it. Right. Now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Johnny and I worked on trip in uh, 2019. So. Um, I got babies and I, I was working acting until let's see about 2000, early 2016. And then I had a kiddo and stepped away and then she got to be three and I did trip because I was just about feeling like I could, like I could be away for that long and um, and then the pandemic hit, and I didn't leave the house, and um, <laughs> I, I I had another baby. So now I've got a nine month old. So I'm I'm now. Um, oh, congratulations! Back, yes, I'm back on. Um, what's that? I'm I'm retired again until <laughs> um, who knows 2023 perhaps. But I did just get <laughs> invited to be the voice for a um, a. It's like um it's it's a podcast but it's really they they've written um it's called Strange Fantasy and they do oh. these horror do, uh, like um kind of like not stage readings but you know it's just like uh, radio dramas basically. Mm -hmm. Oh like the old but, ones from like the 40s? I mean it's not following that style but it is, you know, it's 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 only audio and they're um like they're prolific. They're on their seventh season and they sent me I think eight episodes and they're like twenty to seventy pages each. They're it's a huge amount that they've written. And I've only been able to read my own scenes because there's just so much to read and it's excellent from what I can tell and it's really exciting. So that is something I can do because I can work from home. And that is coming up next weekend. So that's that's kind of I really I really don't get to do a lot of acting when I have the littlest babies when I which I do now. Um, Absolutely. But um, right before the pandemic, one of the last thing was a short called 
um, soft core, <laughs> which sounds bad, but it's a, it's a 19, it's a 1995, like period short film about a bunch of 12 year olds who, um, uh, oh, you know, wow. like watch, watch, watch <laughs> as much soft core as they can find on, on through the TV guide every week. And, okay. and like the, the older TV kid at guide. school slips them a, a uh, real porn tape and I'm the mother oh. who discovers it. Mm -hmm. So that, that turned out really cute. That's in the Hill Country Film Festival right now. And um, that's, that's something I enjoyed. And that's my last things that happened. Awesome. Okay. So go check out Akasha and soft core. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sounds weird to say, but you know. please please Google that on repetition. Yeah. <laughs> Get your tickets now to the Hill Country. Hey, we're not giving those guys free advertising. <laughs> Screw that. We're giving a Kasha free advertising, not Hill Country. Come on. Oh man. Well, uh yeah, it's it's great that you've been able to actually stay active with, you know, the ability of and we've actually had that on multiple other episodes, COVID in Hollywood. We had a uh a two parter, oh. I guess, that we did in the middle and end of our season one mm -hmm. last year, and uh we talked about just how actors are still able to stay active with you know yeah. vocal recordings from home and voiceover so i'm super right. happy you're able to raise your family and uh, continue your passion at the same time that's super important for yeah. sure um so super happy to have you on here and excited to get jumping into our discussion uh really quick i want to jump to uh alec uh, and so alec is a uh, la-based actor and alec why don't you give our listeners a little uh rundown of yourself um thank you guys i um yeah, it's been an interesting time, I guess, for everyone. You know, it's been a year and a half of uh, a lot of uncertainty and definitely um, uh, a situation that's completely put a stop to many projects, but also has been able to work itself out uh, and open many other doors that, you know, might have not been available to me uh, had the mm -hmm. pandemic not been, as, you know, upon us. But it's been, it's been a really interesting time creatively i recently just finished my first screenplay it's a bit of an experiment I, i'm not a screenwriter wow. but um i just did finish one with uh, one of my best mates which is very very exciting and um and i'm also in the midst of producing and directing my first documentary so that's on the producing side of things um and then cool. on the acting um it's actually been very lovely i've i've connected with uh a few directors over the last year and a half and um i've managed to uh luckily be uh part of of a few short film projects that are very very cool and they're coming out soon and and it's been a really lovely thing to do because i really didn't think i was going to be able to do much during this time so it's been i've been very fortunate to do those the shorts i'm a big short film fan so what is your uh, documentary on can you tell us oh yeah absolutely um it's the story of um, of a man who was publicly executed in Venezuela. His name is Oscar Perez, and I'm Venezuelan, okay. born and raised, even though I might not sound like uh, <laughs> South American <laughs> I am. Um, and uh, and it's just, you know, it's a very important story for me to tell. And uh, this guy was a hero. He's a hero. He's an incredible influence. He fought for freedom. He gave his life for freedom. And... Um, and I was able to connect with his family after he was killed by the government. And uh, I've been trying my best to develop this project over the last two and a half years to, to get his story out there, told and, and shared with as many people as possible. So fingers crossed that's getting some traction now and, uh, and we'll be moving forward with it. Absolutely, man. Well, let us know when you've when you've started filming or like when it's done and it hits the festival circuit. And we'd love to have you on and do a follow up on the on the episode itself. So, oh, I'd love to. Uh, I absolutely love to. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so pr super happy to have you on. Um, and is, so I when I was when I, I was reading up on your because it's because we've we've never met Alec and I is Alec is the one person here that, I, that I've never met. We have a mutual friend. Um, and I was reading on your IMDb that you got some classical training in England. Is that correct? A while back? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Classical train classical training in, in what you said? Uh, I think it said something that you had you were classically trained in the UK. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. I was very fortunate. And yeah, I was very privileged to to be. I was accepted to a wonderful school called the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got in, I, I found out I was actually the first Venezuelan 
ever to get into really? that school, which was a yeah, which was a really big deal. Yeah, that's an accomplishment, man. Um, Congratulations. I, yeah, I thank you very much. Also, yeah, I, I think I can also guess what side of the uh, technical versus method you're going to fall on. So that's good. <laughs> uh, I, I, I asked that in particular because when I read that, we typically when we when we invite our guests on, we try to we try to like to we try to like to balance the scale so we can have you know decent debates and such stuff like that. And so when I saw that, I was like, okay, I was like, we'll see where he's at because I didn't ask you personally, but that that excited me a lot. I was yeah, like, all right, yeah, no, it was a wonderful experience. Um, it, it was great. It was it's a great school and and. Uh, yeah, no, I was very, very lucky to. I, and I, I also, I, I did the worst audition. I'll, I'll talk about it if you guys want. <laughs> I did the worst possible audition, and somehow I got in. But yeah, <laughs> perfect, man. Well, we will certainly jump into that because that part, that particular uh, topic is certainly relevant to today's topic as well. Um, so thank you for joining us, Alec. Uh, and last but not least, want to jump over to our good friend Carlton. Uh, Carlton, what have you been up to, man? It's been a while. I haven't talked to you in like close to six months at this point. Hey, sorry about that. I was uh, googling Akisha on softcore. Um, so, <laughs> oh my! Uh, 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 that's just awesome. Um, yeah, I've been busy. So, uh, starting back last November, when things started piping up again and auditions already happening, and this is about the time that they're all coming to fruition. So, I auditioned back right. then, and now we're back on set. So now I'm 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 fully packed up with my calendar, and I and I love it. And of course, we are doing COVID testing for all those that are curious about the industry yes they're you know sticking the thing up our nose and then the next day we work and it continues mm. like that and it will be for uh every day for every day future. yeah every Gosh, day so so <laughs> currently right now i'll just i'll just start here and i'll kind of back up and i'll lead up to the big stuff but i'm i'm currently right now i'm i'm in uh, the dfw area i start this week on stunt training uh and i'll start shooting my role in two weeks for washington's armor a series that's um about George Washington's uh, younger right. life when he was preparing his life. Okay. The one Willie's last life. week. Oh, yeah. I just just did a commercial with George Foreman, the two uh, time I heavyweight champion your, of the world. I saw your pictures of that. Yeah. So <laughs> that that seemed really cool, man. I did you tell him that I love his grill? That's so I didn't know cool. Knew that. That is awesome. Yeah, he is the coolest. That's awesome. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. You win, and I'm okay, guys. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm gonna go out and thank you. <laughs> By myself and George yeah, Ford. And I and I'll tell you, he because of COVID, we you know kept separate like that. But he did one picture on set, and that is my yeah our selfie we took together, uh, holding our fist in the air. My fist. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm a very tall, normal size guy. My fist compared to his was nothing it looks like i'm a child uh uh-huh. when he's all this fist up and that's incredible um just finished that up i just finished up wrapped on uh crimes to riches that's a vh1 mm-hmm. show uh it's a reality type or, or a replay type of show of, of real cases that happened in the past um and then his stretch of texas ground his stretch of texas ground uh we, yeah. we uh, just had our red carpet on that and we just found out a couple of days ago we got distribution it's going out to the public so that will come out real soon great man i play uh, sheriff dave in that and it's a trilogy so the third film coming up i'll be uh, more of a co-starring role on the third one and we just got the script for that to start studying for that to be filmed later this year early 2022 uh, coming up um so the big stuff i guess i'll tell you this one we got on on father's day nationwide release of 12 mighty orphans i'm in that movie with luke wilson and martin sheen um, okay yeah and and some minor parts of that are robert duvall um guy you might know the name of and uh and uh, uh also <laughs> wayne knight's in that uh we've got uh ron white another texan texas comedian yeah baby. Uh, ron white's in that yeah so we it's a it's a big cast and it's about a true story about an orphanage that was in the dfw area i guess fort worth area right and uh, at some point in time they they challenged the school system to have a football team and they fought for it they got it and of course amid all the um obstacles that you would imagine they won the state championship that year in Texas, 1930 something. And so right. that's what the movie's about. Great movie, uh, done by uh, uh, Lane Garrison, another Texas guy here. He produced right. it and uh, great, great, um, great cast. You're gonna love that movie. It's one of those feel good movies coming out this summer and it comes out on the um. On Father's Day, I believe that's June the ninth in theaters yeah. nationwide. So where yeah. are we looking? Where are we looking in the film? Where are we looking to see you? Like, like what? Okay, I'm I'm the referee in the football games. I'm the one calling the championship game. Yeah, you'll gotcha. see me out there. Yeah, the kids get a little picked on. They get a little rowdy. Okay. 
and you'll see me uh, separate that up, and you'll see me at the end uh, call the game. So yeah, okay. they'll they'll get the uh, you'll see me there. Yeah, yeah, in in Perfect. stripes. I'm a zebra. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, man. Right on. So yeah. Every every every, yeah, every single time I see a, a preview for that, I always because you told us about this a while back, mm-hmm. um, and I just I just always think of you. I'm like, oh, okay, I am cool. in the yeah, I am in the trailer. Yeah, I made the trailer. So yeah, mm-hmm. if you watch the trailer, you'll see me in the trailer. Call the game. Yeah, I am in the trailer. So <laughs> perfect, man. Are, are you are you a right. fair coach? Are you a fair referee? Or are you like a you know a bride type? <laughs> I'm kind of blinded, you know, we, we, again, this is about a bunch of kids that didn't have anybody for a uniform. So I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of like, uh, let them play. So they're going to be a little, little harassment going on for the kids. And I kind of don't see it. You know, I'm not letting them do their thing because this is supposedly, you know, the orphanage against the great big powerhouse. And by the way, the powerhouse they beat is, uh, still around as a powerhouse in Texas today. They, they, they tout themselves as a big, a big, uh, team seal. Who, who is it? What's the name of the, what's the name of the, the that, school? Uh, um, you're gonna ask me uh, HP. Their initials were HP. On the, let me see. Let me think. Uh, Dallas Harry Ford area. Potter. Someone's gonna know this. Harry Potter. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Harry Highland Potter. Park. Highland Park. <laughs> Highland I Park. I yes. There we go. Yeah. 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 Got it. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking like Dallas Carter or. Um, yeah. Or, so or, and of course, Eamon Carter's played in the film. It's played right. by uh, Rooster McConaughey. Plays Eamon Carter, a famous coach that winds up again. He's right. the name on the stadium for TCU in sure. the Fort Worth area. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of big stuff in the movie you're going to find that brings out Texas history. Of course, football, you know, it, what's the order here? Football, God, then family. I mean, you know, it's the trilogy yeah. of Texas. So, so it's accurate. yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least if you're yeah. from a small town, absolutely. It's, right. it's from a small town. Uh, then you're, you're certainly there. Well, uh, I'm glad you guys are all being able to stay busy and you're staying working. You're, you're putting your nose to the grindstone and getting everything done. Uh, that is super important to, you know, not even live it as a full-time job, but, you know, experience your passion too. Uh, even if it's, even if it's a side hustle. Uh, so let's jump right in to this particular topic of the week. Um, so like I told everybody, we're going to be discussing, uh, basically de- Debating the best methods of acting, uh, the most efficient, um, what is the most what is the most dangerous? And we'll get into that one in a second. Uh, and then actors that took it too far and over the top to the point where they were almost fired from a film or, you know, their their co-stars or directors never wanted to work with them again because of how in-depth they went to the character. So we're going to jump right in. Um, Akasha, let's start with you, actually. Uh, we'll just go ahead and keep it going around Robin style. Um, so what style of, I, I feel like I kind of already know this just from the, just even the one film we work from, but I might be wrong. So I'll let you tell us, obviously, uh, what style of acting do you prefer? Um, what, what, what method do you prefer uh, at the offset? What do you consider yourself? What type of actress? Right. Um, well, I, I, I definitely cannot call myself a technical actor because I've <laughs> very little technical <laughs> training. Um, <laughs> That, you know, four classes of theater in high school was about sure. the most, um, most, uh, you know, stringent. Um, but, um, you know, I took a lot of time, you know, I, 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 I left high school deciding that I couldn't be an actor, that I, uh-huh. I just wasn't, I wasn't good enough. And I just threw it away for about a decade. And then um, I saw a book at, at the bookstores that said how to stop acting by howard guskin and mm. um i was like ha, 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 what a what a funny title and i started flipping through it and i was like this is making some sense to me and i bought it and i read it <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh my god this is it was like a like one of those paradigm ships like ships <laughs> like 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 my understanding just kind of i just saw the other side of a sphere and i was like this is i get it i get it now and then i uh, started act so you know that that's when I first started trying to do film stuff and I did that for several years and that was just you know um trial and error and watching my footage back a lot Mm -hmm. and then um and just trying to be good and then um I did that for years and then you know had the baby and then I just just in 2019 I found two 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 systems that I liked. Um, there was, there's an online coach. Her name is Joe Kelly. Also, she's, uh, I, I don't know if she's only online. She's also in Los Angeles, maybe in person, but I took one of her first courses and that was a huge thing, but you know, I don't have a name for that. 
uh-huh. um, method. Um, and then um, there's a local uh, uh, class in town. Well, they um, it's her name is Car- Carol Hickey, and she studied with somebody named um, Harold Master George. Um, so I, I wouldn't call these, they're not the method. Sure. They are in, they are internal approaches. So if you want to, if you want to do external internal, you would, I would yeah. definitely have to say I'm internal. I'm terrible at the external approach. <laughs> so I, so I, I guess we, I guess for the, uh, people listening, we should define what like method and technical is. I feel like you and I have had yeah. this argument and debate yeah. so many times over the last year, but okay, Gary, well, let's go ahead and let the audience know what okay, the difference well, uh, is. <laughs> like, um, cause it sounds like, you know, Akasha, what you're saying is with the, the whole internal, um, that's more of sort of the closer to the method style where it's like you feel like the person. And so mm-hmm. when you're, you're not acting as much as you are just portraying that person being. by being the person. Yeah. And, so, yes. the, and then the technical aspect would be from or the external right. or, or classical um, where you are <clears throat> portraying character traits and like affectations and such. And you put that on top of yourself to, uh, to act the role. So if for those of you that for those of you that aren't familiar, if you're not familiar at this point, if, let's say this is your first episode you're listening to uh, find a brief rundown method style acting. Um, there's it's branched out into a ton of different uh, styles and um, methods of the method, uh, as they so eloquently like to pertain to it as. Uh, was started by Konstantin Stanislavski, who's a, a, a Russian theater director. And no way. Ended up shut up, Gary. Uh, and I thought he was Canadian with that name. <laughs> and theorist uh, back in uh, the uh, back in the uh, kind of like the 20th century, I think early 20th century, uh, late 19th century, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, and his ba- his teachings basically were yes, the actor on stage needs to pull what they would call something around emotional recall. They pull bits and pieces of emotional is, uh, instances or scenarios from their past, and they use that to uh, correlate with the actor that they're, excuse me, the character that they're portraying, and they bring out the emotion from that. Um, there's even more intense forms of method where you see a lot of actors and actresses staying in character as the character from the script 24-7, 365, uh, and refusing to even go by their own personal birth name uh, until the final scene is shot or the final performance of the play is done. Um, you know, we'll, and like I said, we'll get into that. You know, you, you heard a lot of stuff like that with uh, Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix and Jared Leto. All the Joker in particular seems to be yeah, a, a, yeah. a character that a lot of people just go over the top for. And I understand he's this maniacal, mm. crazy, insane psychopath. Uh, so you kind of have to. Um, but anyways, Akasha, when we were doing trip, I, I would certainly say you, you tend to lean towards the more, what you would consider to be method. Um, when we were on set, there would be a lot of times where you wouldn't want anybody to come around you and you would just be talking to yourself and getting into character <laughs> and, and it worked and it, and yeah. it worked. I mean, your scream probably burst every eardrum that I have in <laughs> on both sides of my head and backup eardrums if that's a thing um but you just you were so intense on camera and I don't think yeah you certainly couldn't have gotten there uh if it wasn't for right. recalling those no. whatever you were using I disagree with that I know you disagree know. with that and we'll get into okay. that Gary right. I think we've been, Gary and I right. have been friends since we were 12 <laughs> and we've been debating this for 20 years yeah. we've been debating yeah. what's better <laughs> And Gary's when been wrong possible. the entire time. No, yeah. no. Um, and uh, well, uh, one thing I'll. Oh, go yeah. ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead, please. I was going to say, it, you know, what a trip was an extreme situation. Um, Indeed. Because we shot a feature in eleven days, where I think I was in <sighs> yeah. possibly every scene, and I had intense emotion of all kinds, back to back, different emotions every day. So it was it was a situation where I really did have to focus in in ways I didn't I hadn't necessarily done before. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not always what I have to do. But yes, sure. in those situations, I certainly don't know how to do it technically. I only know how to do it by trying to go there. So absolutely, I would, I would definitely fall into the method camp out of those two. Sure. Yeah. And, and the, 
there's also there there's the integrated camp um if we want to talk about just a uh we want to if we want to put it into three categories you could certainly do uh method you could do integrated just in between and then you could do uh classical slash technical acting and for those of you that uh that don't know the classical technical acting which is the other side of the spectrum um gary since that's your favorite yeah. i will go ahead and let you explain it because i know you're going to complain at me well and i mean cry like about you know if, if you like repeat performances and uh you know don't want to like od on drugs uh so the uh, the the technical or classical last uh, acting is um you know uh, this is sort of the acting that has throughout history been more prevalent until uh stanislavski it's a shakespearean style yeah. is is yeah, where you, the credit the, comes from the concept well the concept of it is that you you see what other people do and you sort of take like if you're walking or sitting in a park and you see like uh, a dad playing with his kid you kind of look and see how he's acting and what he's doing his mannerisms and you put that in your little box in your head and then later on when you're acting if you're like saying to yourself this character could use a uh, a, a, a trait that mirrors that you can pull that out of that box and put it on yourself like a costume piece and then portray it so you're not emotionally uh feeling you know horrible despair at the loss of you know you know your your dog or whatever and in pulling up that emotion um but you're understanding what like a human being would do with that and uh putting that onto film sure i feel like that's what makes it so, OK, can we, I'll, we'll get to the debate later. Uh, so I'll, I'll hold my thoughts for that. Um, but yes, it's essentially you are emulating things that you have seen in the past and you have identified this character has this posture, this speech pattern, this cadence, this volume or inflection on particular words or emotions coordinating with this sentence that they're going to say next, things like that. And it's just. The repertoire you have is is memorized, essentially. I'm sure not everybody does it exactly verbatim like that, but it is it is essentially on that line. Mm. So it's just it's basically just rinse and repeat. You know, it's I, I don't know if I'd phrase it like that, Johnny. I mean, well, how would you phrase it then, Gary? Well, you're it's like you're pulling if you like or to go to like a, a co like a cosplay event or something mm -hmm. and like you're trying to build your own costume you you know what the idea of it is and right. but you don't have like a whole costume kit so you just you're pulling uh, various pieces to kind of put together a costume that that looks good right but you're still memorizing particular instances from your pa from things you have seen uh -huh. and you're reusing those so it's just it's just mimicking things you've done in the past so it's it's the same right. thing yeah you're 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 portraying you're acting you know, it's it's called acting. Yeah, OK. Boy. And we'll get into thank you, <laughs> Olivier. We'll get into that later. Uh, let's move on. But Gary and I could go on for years. Um, so, uh, Alec, let's jump to you. Um, I, I know you had stated that you were uh, you were trained over in the UK um, at a at the school that you were at. I think I had read like Judy Dench went there um, and a couple other famous uh, British actors for sure. So uh, so you must have some great stories. But what's where in the spectrum do you think you would fall? What's your favorite type of method? when it comes to when it comes to acting um this is such an interesting conversation to be honest i haven't i haven't really discussed this in a while uh sure you know but it's 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 uh i i don't really know where i fall then i've had such a such a an opportunity to uh i've been privy to different techniques and different types of schools um you know sure. firstly i i went to i went to boarding school in wales and that's that's when i first started doing theater uh -huh. and there uh, you know our teacher was very much um classically oriented but also very experimental so we did a lot oh. of uh comedy you know comedy dell'arte and we also did right. a lot of uh improvisation you know we did a lot of viola spolin clive barker a lot of keith johnstone um to start with, which was, that was my, you know, my beginning was that I, I started doing and Bogart's viewpoint, which is all very strange stuff when you don't know much about acting. You know, I remember we used to play around with, uh, with brooms. I remember, you know, uh, I believe my very first role that I played was, uh, corrugated cardboard. That was my very first role, um, and the color blue. I had to be blue for a whole play. Um, what? I love it. So it was. Just, it's just very, very weird stuff, you know, very strange stuff. And then I went to Central, and 
that school was uh, a lot of early Stanislavski mixed with uh, Michael Chekhov, who was the pioneer of, of what we call now the psycho, psychophysical approach. Right. Um, and then I moved to L.A., and in L.A. I went to Stella Adler. And Stella is very much wow. uh, about, you know, imagination, the use of imagination yeah. as a means to get to the character. So that's sort of like briefly where I've been and in terms of education and also, yeah, I, I, at the end of the day, for me, it's, it's I think Jack Nicholson famously said the method is whatever works. And that's sort of where I stand. You know, mm. I think we, we, you know, as an actor, you're always constantly figuring out ways to get better and and to learn. So when it comes to a role, the newest role, then you'll do whatever it takes to to uh, you know to to make it happen. I think that one of my teachers famously said to me, "The most dangerous kind of acting is the boring kind," and that to me is sort of uh, <laughs> where I land. You know, it's it's trying to to really bring sure. a character to life and, and, and raise the stakes as much as possible, you know? Absolutely. And I think that's, that's, ex that's extremely fascinating that you had to go from, you jump from this classically trained style when you're in the UK and then you go to LA and then you jump into Udahagen. Um, and so like, you know, back in school, when, you know, Gary and I were school in school, when we started doing this, Udahagen was one of the main theorists that we, w that we studied. Um, yeah. and those are just on such Absolutely, opposite yeah. ends of the spectrum. Um, so that really must've, that that must that must have made you question everything that you had originally learned. So that's yeah. that's pretty cool. I, I do have to a ask before. Go ahead. Um, no, a little bit. You 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 don't. Qu I mean, I, I didn't necessarily question the training, but you start sort of doing research on it. And and for example, you know the the for in, at least in America, the biggest influence was of course sort of you know Lee Strasberg and and Clerman and Cheryl Crawford. Sure. Where they opened the the group theater in 1931 and. And they brought all these teachings from from um, the the Moscow Art Theater, and then very famously Stella Adler joined, uh, you know, was part of the group theater, and then she went back to Russia and sort of uh, met with with Stanislavski again in his later years, and she discovered that a lot of the things that he had previously that he had pre previously taught he felt they were wrong. And then that's when she came back to America with this whole idea of uh, imagination and, and, you know, be, imagination being stronger than our reality. But the, there's varying degrees of truth in, in all the different uh, techniques. And I think, yeah, I think um, as long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting others, it's, it's, uh, it's whatever works, you know, you can take it as, as far as you can. Sure. It's kind of like absolutely. religion, right? A little bit, yeah, absolutely. You know, Abs yeah, absolutely. Like we're all looking that at way, it, yeah. that the thing, of the the metaphor with I think it's the elephant. You know, we're mm. oh, it looks like the tail. No, it, no, God looks like the ear. Like, and but it's all the same elephant. We're just looking at a different part of it. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. As long as it's not extreme and you're not hurting someone else or yourself in, in the process, I think absolutely go go as far as you want to take it. You know? Yeah, for yeah, for sure. And then and that gosh, that's that's really that's a really uh, good quote to be able to look at that from from that perspective, you know. Um mm -hmm. so so from what I hear from you so from what I'm hearing from at least you two, you would kind of consider yourselves integrated, just kind of be in the middle, you know, uh kind of like like you stated, Alec, whatever whatever as Jack Nicholson yeah. eloquently stated, whatever works, you know, that's that's the style of acting that you prefer. Um so Carlton to you. Uh, oh no, Akasha, go ahead. Sound like you're gonna say something. Oh, sorry, I I had my turn, but I wanted to say, yeah, for a while, no, no. every time I I did a like you know mo mostly shorts, I would do something, and then I tried to, I'd be like, that worked. I'll do it again on the next one. Immediately wouldn't work. I I had to mm -hmm, invent mm -hmm. the wheel every single time. It was just yeah. like I don't know. I just figured out by the end, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and and those those and it's just just like being a human. It's it's you know I've, that's why I've always loved the journey of acting. You're growing. Mm -hmm every line that comes out of yes. your mouth, every character that you play, you know, yep. um, the fact that you're, I, I would, and I would agree with you. Uh, I would feel that the great actors, the one that the ones that truly understand it, they're always improving. And that goes for, and Gary, you might disagree, but that goes for classically trained or oh, no. Yeah. Method. I mean, I acting is a journey, you know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, I, I think it's like life. You, you try and do better every time. 
and I always, when I was in school and acting, I always would try and do better in the next show than I did in the last and try and learn and grow sure. and, and do better. Yeah. You're, you're always watching. It's funny. I had a, um, and, and well, and I, uh, gosh, you know, is a mutual friend of ours. Uh, <clears throat> his name is Michael Schnick. He's, he's an actor in New York and he had told me still one of my favorite quotes to this day. And I was surprised it came from him. Uh, and <laughs> Schnick, that, Schnick, that is a slight at you if you're listening. So, um, say what you want. Um, but, but he had told me, he said, I believe strongly that the greatest actor or actress to have ever lived has not been discovered yet and may never be discovered. Um, and it just go, and he, I, I believe that he, he might be right. You know, maybe the greatest actor, or actress to ever live, maybe they lived 300 years ago and we will never know about it because we, they didn't have media back then, obviously, but they didn't have the connections to get in front of, uh, like that, to get on the, uh, at the globe theater yeah. and perform a Shakespeare play. Yeah. Or I, I would like to point out that 300 years ago, that actor would have been, been classically trained. So Johnny just admitted <laughs> classical. No, technical you can't is do this. Thank and Die you. Hard is not a Christmas yes, movie. You have Die said Hard is Die not is a, a Christmas, Christmas movie so many times. <sighs> I can't even begin with you, Johnny. Gary. Okay, uh, we will get to that. Yeah, I feel like every episode we have to argue about Die Hard. We're not going to get into it. We don't have a ton of time today, so I want to get the back on track, Gary. Stop, take a quick stop. poll of the, the panel. You're derailing is, me. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? No, Akasha, we're not go. doing that. We will get to that later. They can all come back for our Christmas section okay. in December. Uh, so, but I, I, I do believe, I, I, I do believe that. Yeah, you know, I, I do believe that that the greatest to have ever lived or it could very well, they may not have been born yet, but uh, maybe they are and they're just stuck doing community theater because they don't have the connections or, or whatnot. So it's interesting to think about on, on a lot of levels. Carlton and an over yeah, yeah. And an agent. <laughs> exactly. And a good one, hopefully uh, Carlton to you, uh, where do you f see yourself falling on the spectrum? Do you have a particular, um, are you, are you method and you, you love using Meisner or are you just classically trained or are you self-taught? Um, where, where are you at on that spectrum? I'm glad you asked. Uh, no, <laughs> so um, when I I grew up in uh, in theater, I grew up uh, going to classes and doing right. plays. I grew up in uh, even my church, and I by the time I graduated high school, I had done probably a dozen plays and at least that many uh, musicals. Um, so I had all that training for stage, and and that training, of course, when you're a child, they're teaching you just to be a child, just to be real. That if it, and it's easy to get that out of a child. Um, to make me upset, take away something. To make me happy, give me what I want. And it's funny how raw those emotions are when you're a child and how quickly you can get there. And it's 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 funny that that we're not tainted with a life of, you know, deceit and anything else in our in our head. We just do. And so that's where I came from. And then a long hiatus, many, many years of not being on stage, not being in plays, anything, and coming back to be in television and film now. And having a different kind of style, right? Because it's the small things. It's not played into the guy in the back row. Now it's my eyebrow just barely lifting. And all of a sudden you can tell he's questioning you, you know? And so th this whole thing has become, for me, it's been, it's been um, kind of like a, a toss up of those two things. Yes, trained. And yes, Meisner was where I came from. And, and that's important, whatever else is doing. Oh. But for me, I have experience now. I have experience in life. I, I know what it feels like to be hurt. I know what it feels like when a child, my child, uh, falls down and gets a skinned knee. And so I can draw on that as a, you know, 50 years old man. I can say, <laughs> you know, okay, I know this goes. So sometimes I actually go there emotionally. Sometimes I do have, have that method in going, okay, well, I'm going to let myself um, be in this character fully, like what would it feel like to break up with this individual? As again, as a child, I wouldn't know a, about a divorce or a breakup, but now I can go, oh yeah, I know what that feels like. And I can take myself there completely. And, I, and I'm more of that. I find myself more heading towards that direction in, in methodology, but I don't go that far to go like we talked about some of the people you mentioned a minute ago, where I take drugs to be the, the drug addict or live on the streets to be a homeless person, not take a shower to be uh, or, or being by a name of somebody else. I've not gone that far at ever, and I don't see myself ever doing that for a role. But some roles I've done, I've actually let myself just engulf that character. Like, what would that feel like completely if I was them? And how would it feel if, if they were responding that way? You know, I, 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 again, we're going to talk about it in a minute. I know you had that question coming about what role did we play like that. But, but I'll tell you, there's been places where I let myself go into that method acting and let, let it go go into my head you know like i said the magic is more out of your head i i let it go like into me like okay these are real and i don't know what the other two here but on my acting i've never really done the crying on cue on command i don't do uh -huh. that 
So that's real hard for me to do that, even if I'm trying to get there to get there. But recently I had a scene where it, it got there and I was like, OK, that that actual technique worked other than, you know, onions and, you know, eye drops that actually works for me. So we're constantly learning too. as actors. We're constantly learning what our our techniques are and our boundaries are. And uh, and I and I we've we've talked about all this in, in in for a long time now. But I'll say for me, it's a it's a combination, and it's also leaning towards I love I love method acting, but not to the extreme of like we talked about like playing the Joker. I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm not going there. <laughs> But but I definitely think that sometimes it's it, for me it's like okay I can draw this experience I know what it feels like to be this this dad or this guy going through this relationship so that's my that's my that's my take on it okay uh, and so yeah it sounds like all three of you guys actually fall into that that same spectrum of kind of just whatever the role is and whatever it calls for that's the method that you prefer to use and that's 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 totally okay there's a lot of there's a lot of great actors out there who who do that they they claim even in interviews that they switch back and forth and it fluctuates from you know project to project uh so going from Going from, I want you guys to think really quick, and I, I did ask you this ahead of time, but can you guys each give me a particular role that challenged you to the point that you totally embraced one of those preferred styles of acting, like one of those preferred methods, um, whether it be sp a specific uh, a ph a acting philosopher or theorist or just a general broad, I just use classical training, um, can be anything, it can be a dramatic role, a comedic role. It can be in a horror film, a commercial, whatever. Um, Akasha, let's start with you. Uh, which 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 role do you think kind of pops into your head that you had to totally, yeah. you know, in, uh, engulf yourself in a preferred method? In one or the other, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I I could do one from each spectrum. The the one I did in softcore um, <laughs> was um, <laughs> was a very religious mother um, divorcee who was very strict. Um, and, um, you know, the directors met with me and they're like, this was my parents. These were my friend's parents. I was like, I didn't know anyone like this, strangely, growing up in <laughs> DFW. This is not my culture. I do not understand raising children this way. And um, and so I had to I used, um, yeah, the imagination work um, sitting there. And and um, I this is this is why I love acting is you you often start out feeling like this character is so not me. I can't. I can't do it. And then I sat there and I imagined and I was like, oh, well, there are things that would terrify me as a parent if my parent, if my children were exposed to it. It's not porn, but there are things that would terrify me. There are things, you know, that would take me to these, these, these emotions. And all of a sudden, one, you know, by the end of it, you're like, I am her. I never knew it. <laughs> And that, and that's the beauty of act. That's like the spiritual growth of acting is to, yep. to, to literally walk in another person's shoes and realize no matter how far apart we think we are, we are the same. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I couldn't, I could, I, I feel like that was the most I've been, um, different from myself, I guess. So that required that for me and worked well. Um, back in high school, I was in the Libertine. Um, and so I, we, it was Victorian. We had to learn how to walk. Um, I had to stop walking like gangly and, and teenager and casually and learn how to have some grace and, um, and take on an accent, um, and things like that. So we did a lot. I had to do a lot of technical training to, to work, to work on that role. So, mm -hmm. and I haven't had, had the opportunity since to really stretch in that way. But but that would be I, that that's the most technical I think I've been called to be. So Kasha, let's uh, let's hear your accent. Let, I'm, I'm curious. No, come no. on, come on, <laughs> <laughs> come on. We, so did your we agent tell you about this? With an actual person from well, you're not British, Alec, but you're. How <laughs> how do you have this accent? How do you how do you have your mm -hmm. accent Sorry. if you were? Um, she, she's asking she, she's yeah. asking if you were born and raised in Caracas uh how do you have a it's a, a british sounding accent um i've been uh, i've been just channeling my inner anthony hopkins <laughs> by him being method for 20 years thank, thank you alec thank you I've been, I've been i've been in character ever since i left venezuela um and no scene. I, I, and scene no uh <laughs> 
I, I, I learned English in the UK. Well, I, I, I left Venezuela when I was fairly young. I, le- I left when I was 17. I graduated uh-huh. okay. high school and then went to Wales. And um, uh-huh. I, I, I went to, to boarding school. And, and, and my teacher there said, you know, I, I took theater and my teacher said what I wanted to do. And at the time, still is, you know, a big passion of mine, Shakespeare. I, I, I said to him, I want to do Shakespeare in, in London. That's sort of like, you know, mm. that's the, the, the big actors and, and the big actresses that I admire, they've done that. And sure. in Venezuela, you, you know, at the time, you, you that, that's, there, there's not a big Shakespeare community. So that for me was the, the, the pinnacle of, of what acting should be like or, you know, when I was a kid, what it should sound like. Um, and, and my teacher said to me, listen, I'll, I'll teach you English. Um, if you miss one, se- I mean, I'll give you private tutorials, but if you miss one session because you're at the pub or you're hungover, I will stop teaching you. And I never missed uh, one of his sessions. I was really, really keen to uh, learn the language um, that, that I would, you know, that I would perform in my mind. I was like, I need to learn how to do this properly so I can do Shakespeare in the UK. And that was, that was then. That, that was when sort of like, RP accent was yes um, was uh, necessary to even get into schools or you know now is not like that anymore now you can get away with just you know the accent that you might have but at the time yeah you had to learn how to speak uh, with a with sort of like an RP accent so mm-hmm. and has it become your your natural way of speaking or is it yeah your, it it, yeah. it really did dialect. it sort of yeah I. Uh, it, I, it's just naturally how I started sort of thinking and, 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 and learning and, 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 and observing language. And it's been really lovely to, to, um, to learn. I, I love English and I yeah. really, really wanted to master it because it's not my first language. So um, for me, it became, uh, you know, like going to, if you wanted to go to, uh, I'd say make you know become a mechanic you you want to go to germany or italy or japan where the very best uh, at building cars are and, and then you learn from the best and that's what i wanted in terms of of uh, of acting and to me that was that was the uk absolutely wow. it's it's that's always so, that's, it's crazy that makes my heart sore like it's so romantic to 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 go that far i love it i love that yeah, you know, you said something really, really nice. Okay, you said something lovely just now, and it's, it's, it's about acting being the, uh, you know, a form of empathy and a form of realizing yeah. that we, 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 we can be um, emotionally connected to one another, and that's what it is for me. And in, in my personal experience, that's what it is. At, at, at the very best, it's uh, one of the most groundbreaking forms of empathy and at the very mm-hmm. worst it can really it be uh just a huge uh showcase of ego so you have both <laughs> you know to to balance it out yeah well so now that yeah. you're now that you're in um los angeles are you attempting to take on american accent and and live with, uh yeah like, yeah to no, change I, again <laughs> I, I love accents. I, I think they're a huge part of, of characters. Um, yeah. The physicality and the voice, I would say, um, are, are the biggest things, uh, to at least for me, in, in order to tap into immediately, especially when you have an audition that you have to do in two days or like something yeah. that, that happens very quick. You can tap into a voice or an accent or physicality fairly quickly. But um, I love accents. Yeah, I, I, I recently auditioned for... Um, Actually, uh, it's pretty cool. A, a young Andy Garcia uh, hmm. was wow. my my la- my latest audition, which was really cool. So I spent <laughs> a whole weekend studying him and his voice, and you know uh, his 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 accent has a little raspiness that he speaks like this. Uh, mm-hmm. Andy, he speaks a little yeah. bit of raspy. So you go go there and you try and figure out. And then uh, yeah. and then I'm, you know a couple of weeks ago I did a Irish character, and you go through the emotions of how they speak. It's, it's just lovely work. Uh, just really exciting for me, you know? Yeah. So Alec, give us then, give us, give us a role that, uh, that challenged you to the point that you had to totally embrace one of these preferred methods of acting, whether it be recent or, or in the past. Um, top of my head, I would say 
come to mind. My latest one was one of the uh, one of the roles that I just recently played in in a short film that's about to come out. I had to play um, uh, a the owner of a whorehouse in Venezuela for a horror film, and um, I actually gained uh, over twenty five pounds for the role. Oh. Um, so that wow. was really, really challenging. That was really challenging to do. And then I had to drop it for the next role. I had to drop 30, 30 pounds in three months. So that was a, that was the first time that I've gone so extreme in terms of physicality in, in such a short amount of time. Um, and in terms of, of I, I remember I, I, my first play that I did in LA was Waiting for Godot, and I, I, uh, oh, yeah. I played the, the role of Lucky. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and that was a, a really interesting one because it's such, a, such an interesting character and such an interesting piece. I mean, the character only speaks twice in the whole play, and the rest of the time he has to remain silent until he, of course, explodes into this insane monologue um, and I do remember just just staying, you know, I, 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 I think I slept with the character's clothes. Um, I wouldn't want to shower for the weekend. It was really kind of like that, like that a little bit crazy. Um, but, you know, we did like a, a Orderville sort of uh, style of play. So I had makeup on and I wouldn't take it off and... It was just easier for me to wow. just remain in that mind space to be able to to get in in touch with with everything that was going on. Um, that's that's the one that comes to mind. Yeah, it's wow. all it's almost like it's almost like when you stay the, the dedication and the you know the meticulous uh, things that you were going through every every single day to stay in character is almost a necessity, which is why I'm such a big proponent of the method of the method method. You know, is because if you take a break in between those characters, at least for me back in the day when I was, when I was at conservatory and and even in high school and stuff, um, I, I had a hard time taking a 12 hour break from my character and then getting to rehearsal and immediately snapping my fingers and jumping back into the role. Uh, it took me, it took me like an hour or so to fully get there. Um, and maybe that's just me because it was my preferred style of, of acting, but the dedication and you know the meticulous nature of going through that to always be in character to live how that character would have lived it takes a lot and i know it takes a lot out of you and, and we'll certainly get into that but no i i commend you i commend you for that that's like that's that's dedication you know and that's that's what i think the yeah. difference between that and the technical but, style is um go, go ahead no and i, I think uh you know perhaps uh, akasha and and carlton feel the same what you want to do you know at least what i want to do um, when I'm on stage or in front of the camera is completely forget that there is even a technique to, to, to think about, you know, you want right. to be able to, to work on the character's physicality, internal life. Right. Uh, there's a fourth wall. Whatever. There's a fourth wall every single time you, you want to pretend there's no audience, that there's no camera. It's just you in the moment by yourself with the other Correct. people. In like that you, want, you, you want to be, I, I think, every single technique and every single class and every single practitioner at the end of the day, right. it's all for you to feel free and present. That's basically it. And being able to listen. Um, I mean, that's what Meissner does. He places mm-hmm. the focus on your partner, you know, and, uh, and what your other act- fellow actors are doing, which is so important. Um, like, you know, Meryl Streep famously said that, that she, her characters become alive not as much as for for what she does, but how she's mm-hmm. looked uh, through the eyes of her her co-stars, and that's definitely true, you know. Um, so there's there's a lot of things that that just lead to just being present and listening, and I think ultimately that is that is what the goal is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it, it's it's very interesting because it sounds like you with. Uh, you know, staying up and like wearing your makeup, that, that's a very, um, on the scale of technical method or classical method, that's a very method side, you know, it's, uh, like kind of Dustin Hoffman, uh, famously did in, um, yeah. Marathon Man. In Marathon Man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, I would not have expected quite, uh, quite that from someone who went to go train, 
uh, in the United Kingdom to yeah. uh, I think to, a lot come of, away with that. A lot of what we had learned back in at conservatory was, and this was 15 years ago, a lot of that was old acting theorists. And we talked about, you talk about Olivier in particular mm. is who we're talking about. We, he talked about how he, he drew from a lot of Shakespearean originalities and, um, uh, excuse me, or subtleties that, uh, they came from originally. That was from, God, those books were from like the sixties and the seventies and stuff. And over time, I feel that the experimental method has really expanded across the globe. And in particular, I, from what Alec, from what you've been saying, it sounds like that rings true for, for the UK as well. Um, so, so it doesn't surprise me as much that it might've, you know, 30 years ago. So, uh, I, I guess Alec, a, a question to you, uh, a lot of people have played, uh, Hamlet in movies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who hasn't? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Name so, one actor who hasn't so played Hamlet. <laughs> which one do you think did it best then? I'm, I'm curious to see where your opinion on that falls. Uh, I mean, my favorite Hamlet is is uh, is probably I th I'd say Richard Burton. Um, you know, he he he's good one. he to me, yeah, he's he's just a genius. Um, he's I'm my favorite. Say Mel Gibson. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen, it props to anyone who decides to do Shakespeare. Sure. You know, Dan it's Daniel Day Lewis. Role. Daniel Day Lewis left mid performance because he he saw you know his father uh, materialized on stage and he never came back. Um, right. So I uh, prop to anyone who does any any Shakespeare roles. Yeah, mm. don't lose uh, your eyes, so, Gary. So you're saying like the method actor couldn't even finish the play, so he had probably had to get you know like a, a technical actor. All right, we to... will get into that okay, portion right, in I'm, a second, I'm just Gary. Saying, you jump ahead saying... yourself. No, I'm not. I'm, listen, I'm not suggesting anything. I, I'm just saying that he famously just left. He mid performance, he just left the stage. Uh, right, right. And 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 you know then then you have an actor like Richard Button who. On the drop of a of a hat, he could just give you any any character from the Shakespeare world uh, okay. in a second. Uh, but it's it's just very interesting how it all works. Um, but I would say, yeah, in terms of what what I was able to do with with Lucky, I was just experimenting, you know, because you, I am I am sort of you could say classically trained, uh, in, in, you know, an actor that's been privy to study the techniques. But I, I also I'm very curious, and if I hear you know, stories or I read a book or I read a biography and I'm like, oh my God, that's really interesting. I'm going to try it out. I'm, why not? You know, I, I don't right. think, um, I, I don't like to be uh, just the one thing. I, I, I think the more you know, the more you're able to play with and, and, and fool around with and sort of experiment. I think that's, yeah. that's the best thing you can do as an actor. Mm -hmm. Every role, I think, requires a certain degree of each method, you know, I mean, if, I mean, yeah. you know, I, we argue about this all the time, Gary, but w yeah, are there it, roles it, that I became integrated yeah. and used technical? Of yeah. course. It, it's definitely a spectrum, not a yeah. binary choice. Absolutely. Yeah. I completely, 100% agree. Um, and so really, really quick, so we can move on to the next uh, section. I, Carlton, I want to jump to you really quick. Um, is there a particular role that really stands out to you that you had to kind of hyper-focus in on one of these uh, preferred methods? Well, I haven't, I haven't done any of, of uh, the works of Billy yet, so uh, maybe one day I'll get to there, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, Billy Shakespeare, that is. Yes. Um, so <laughs> for me, yeah. So um, for me, I think one of the outstanding roles that, that I had that had to go there and I and I found myself staying there for some reason was in um, Casting the First Stone. I play in that film, the, the lead, I play the um, TV evangelist and I found myself talking with an accent that I assumed, that I, I basically based it off of uh, Robert Tilton, an old TV evangelist back in the day um and so i i did i studied his um mannerisms i studied about how he how he talked to the to the audience through the camera and i did that i found myself even like through lunch talking to the casting crew as the as the evangelist i found myself making the jokes that the evangelist would make um he's a uh, womanizer in this film he's uh he's a snake in the grass but in every in every way and ultimately one scene is me on stage you know doing the you know, fake healing and whatever. Next thing I'm, I'm talking to someone very, very, um, very lovingly trying to get them to give me what they want. And maybe the next thing I'm dealing with somebody like a, like a board of, of, of deacons or elders that I'm trying to convince that I'm right. And the next one I'm dealing with a, a, a shyster who I'm saying, Hey, I'm, I'm paying you money to, you know, to, to rig this up. So it's, it's kind of a, 
it's kind of an emotional roller coaster, even even shooting a day of scenes like that. Because one scene, like I said, I'm very loving trying to come on to a woman. Next scene, I'm trying to get a whole audience to to give me money and participate. And I found myself, like I said, so engulfed in that character and liking where I was going. I didn't want to come out of it. Even going home, like uh, getting gas at the gas station, my hair was all big still, and I was wearing a suit. I'd stop at the gas station and still be like, "Hey guys, how are you?" Know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I I I got there. I was like, I am this reverend, you know, guy, this evangelist, and I really like. Uh, Pastor Scott was his name, and I'd, even the uh, director kept saying afterwards, like text messages, you know, Pastor Scott was so good today. Pastor Scott, that was that was exactly what I wanted, and I was like, yeah, I think I got into that really, really. Um, really well the other one though that was challenging for me was in a vid chronicle it's a short film and i played a uh, a man that's married who actually is gay who has mm -hmm. a a is having an affair with another man with a, with a man uh, married to a woman I should say and then i have an affair and i have to tell by the end of the short i have to reveal that i i um have to tell my my spouse for 16 years of marriage that i am gay and i want to actually be with him and not with her and it dissolves a, a marriage at that point. And playing that at first, I, I took it kind of flippantly when I first read the script, like any, any short, you look at it, go, I can do this, I can do this. And then as I got into it, I realized I have an audience of people that I have to be believably, one, first of all, that I am married, and two, that I am, I am not happily married, but I am gay. And third, that I, I, I'm in love with another man. That wasn't that easy for me. When I got there, I said, I'm, I'm taking on a role that, that, that I want to make sure it's genuine. I don't want to be any persona of something or a stereotype of something. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be just Jack on, you know, on Will and Grace. I don't, I don't want to be just mm. there because I know that's what I think a gay man looks like or acts like. I want to go there with what would this character do? And and again, I think it stands alone. It's it's very well liked and received on on the channel. Uh, it's a YouTube channel show, Mid Chronicles, and it's very well received. I got I got I got really good reception from LBGQ uh, relationship um, people that said, "Hey, that was done well, and that was believable." And to me, that that's been the most moving part of all this is getting feedback. So when someone says, "I believed it. I believed you were." <laughs> this way so that's probably the most challenging and again it required to me to cry at the end and that's probably one of those things again that i said earlier not in me not not of me not the way i do things so when that came to that scene and i prepared for that scene and being with another person in that scene that i know really well um to take me there it was good and we looked up from that scene this is a behind the scenes thing i'll tell you a little trivia thing here but we looked up from that scene when we got done with that scene um the other actor and I uh, embraced and I, we dissolved in marriage and I had been uh, caught to be uh, a, a homosexual man my entire life. We looked up and the scripty and the um, uh, AD and the sound guy holding the boom were all got all had tears rolling down their, down their faces. They all were streaking with tears. And I said, that's it. Confirmation. It was there. It was what we wanted. So that was probably the, those two, those two characters, Pastor Scott and, and that and that one in that in that mid chronicle were probably my moments where I, I got there. I I hit, you know, where everything when you walk away was like, yeah, that's why I'm an actor. That 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 solidifies it right there. All the training, everything else, I don't know, but I know at that moment I walked away saying I left it all there on the on the uh, on the floor that night. All right, that's hey Carlton, I'm just curious. I'm just. I'm just curious to know. Sorry, I'm just curious to know uh, if I may ask. Uh, was it difficult for you to to shake? either or both characters after you were done? It was um, on the pastor role. It was hard to shake it. I took it home. Um, again, it was, it was one of those things where I, you know, I, this, he's a flirt. He's a, he's a womanizer. He's all these things. And I got home and I started finding myself going to that mindset about certain relationships, even with people I was dealing with in real world. I found myself, almost like what would pastor scott say because he's a lot more bold than i would be he's a lot more outspoken than i would be and it was hard to shake that the other one i think at the end of the day um alec for me it was not hard to shake but it was one of those things where i took it home on a high i went home and just right. could not come down off of that i literally right. was like that's got to come out i hope it comes out like i thought it would but i to see the to see the crew in tears and to walk away that is that is like my touchdown in the super bowl that's that's it yeah. that's my ring yeah. that's my my trophy and i was like 
I'm not sleeping tonight. I'm, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to go sleep anytime soon. Yeah. We hope that you are enjoying this rousing episode of Let Feather Productions' I Don't Give a Flick. To help us bring you more of the content that you love, please consider following us on Patreon at patreon.com slash leadfeather. There are three tiers to choose from, with special and exclusive merchandise in our VIP level. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. So, since we've got into the minds of each of you guys, um, I do want to go ahead and jump in really, uh, really quick. I wanted to go ahead and jump into the hot debate of the night that we've kind of already briefly touched on. Touched on. Um, let's start with so technical classic acting versus method acting. Um, which is more effective in giving a rousing performance? Uh, I lead this. Uh, I leave this open to to the panel, of course. But uh, Gary, I'm going to start with you since you and I haven't really gotten to give our opinions too much tonight, as is the the wonderfulness of yeah. it's. It's been very interesting to kind of you know hear what everybody's uh, thought processes are. Absolutely. Like, so I really appreciate you guys for uh, being so open with that. Yeah, so, with that in mind, what do you feel gives the more effective uh, performance? Uh, technical. Yeah. Why? Uh, because technical acting, um, you, uh, I think you distill the essence of humanity down into what, what it, what it is. And you, you find those, those moments and then you, you reproduce them, um, or, um, how did you, how did you term it earlier? Reuse them? Uh, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're you, recycling them. Yeah. Yes. You recycle <laughs> them, um, for more than they're originally worth. And like, you can, you can take that and, and build the character that you want. And it requires you to, to stop and think about, you know, how am I, how, like, as Akasha said earlier, how, how am I going to walk? You know, um, you know, how do I adjust my mannerisms, uh, my, my body type, my, my body motions, my, the tone of my voice, you, you put all these pieces on to, to build a character and to, uh, to understand the character and how they, how they would perceive the world and how they would portray themselves to it. And you can, s I like classical or technical because you work, I think more with the script because you understand like, where your character falls and what they're supposed to be uh, representing in the script. And instead of just coming from the inside of the character out, you can use that to help define how you want to portray the character with instead, because you have a more holistic view of the script. And I, I think that's got a lot of, it's had a lot of really excellent performances over the years. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh and I will combat that with. I had a feeling you might. Yeah, you might. Uh, I I don't absolutely. I don't think that you're wrong in some of the things that you're saying. I never did. Um, it's just always funny to to right. get your goat and give you a hard time. Um, but it God, just acting is one of the last true art forms. It feels like honestly, just with the passion that people are able to display for their craft, because you're not only using what you think the character would do in a technical aspect, like if you want to, if we really want to get into, if we want to talk about like David Mamet or, mm -hmm. or Olivier or something, which I'm sure we will in a second, you know, and going off your impulses and not using any type of emotional recall and not using, uh, any type of, uh, you know, like effective memory or even improvisation. Right. Um, you, you still need, you need to have both aspects. I'll agree with you on that, but I have always felt that method in, in particular, Lee Strasberg's his school of acting uh, mm. where he had stated that the two areas of discovery that were of primary importance for his work at the actor studio uh, were improvisation and effective memory. Um, he said it is finally by using these techniques that the actor can express the appropriate emotions demanded of the character. Mm. When your actors are essentially, I mean, in, in a, in a kind of, I don't want to put a negative connotation associated with it, but they're liars, essentially. Like you're not playing somebody who's yourself. <laughs> you know, it's you're playing pretend. Yeah, unless and, you're a method actor. Unless you're a method actor. Exactly. Yeah. But even then, you're only playing it for a, a short amount of time. Or, Maybe. <laughs> or if you're like Kathy Bates or yeah. Dustin Hoffman or Robert De Niro, then obviously you need like a year to two years of counseling to yeah. break away from the character. But you have to remember that to, to make the audience feel like the performance is genuine, when people go to cinema and, and film and they watch a movie, it's an, a form of escapism. It's a form of, of fantasy, almost fantastical whim in, in excuse me, a whimsical fantasy in some parts. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to 
think about their own lives for those two hours. They want to think about a story that doesn't pertain to them. They want to live vicariously through the act, the actors on screen or on stage. I've always felt that personally, at least. And I don't feel that necessarily all technical or classically trained performances are a completely sincere. I don't feel that they're completely authentic. And that does bother me. Like I, so I, I, I was actually researching earlier. I was like, who's classically trained and blah, blah, blah. Um, so people like, um, like a, a Patrick Stewart, you look at a lot of British based actors as you had. Yeah. So eloquent. As, Which as is why stated. Alex so put me on my heels when he's like, I like method. You're completely changing my views on life. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Even people like, uh, you know, even and especially even people like um, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch or Tom Hiddleston or Alec Baldwin, oddly enough, a lot of people don't realize he is a huge proponent of of Mammoth's philosophies. Mm. William H. Macy, um, you know, that he actually started um, practical aesthetics theory with mm -hmm. with Mammoth. Um, I love all of those actors in particular roles. Do I ever feel feel like any of their performances have tugged on the heartstrings of mine have i teared up have i felt angry truly angry at the world seen a scene that they've they've portrayed like even a scene that maybe got them nominated for an oscar or something no i haven't i went back through and i, I went back through my my mental records and rolodex of films that they had all been mm. in and i was like they're they're all good they're all very talented actors and they're all um they speak with such vibrato and um they've got such panache to how they deliver their lines but it's just not the same as when I'm watching Daniel Day Lewis or Dustin Hoffman or Robert De Niro or uh, you know, um, oh god, yeah, whoever else, you know, uh, Meryl Streep. Uh, it's or Val Kilmer. I forgot to mention him. It's just, it's just not the same for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just not the same. I, I don't feel like the performance is quite as authentic. You know, well, what would be very uh, interesting to do, and I don't know how we would do it, uh -huh. is to get like. 20 videos of okay. like people doing scenes and just say like, do you think this person's method or technical? And like have like a, a mix of both. You'd have to not know the people Absolutely. Which would make it, but like, it'd be interesting to see if like, that's maybe something, you know, we're just putting on right. like, or if that's something that actually does kind of come through. Right. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if you could, because sometimes you have to find like 20 no name people and be like, Hey, right. Do this soon. that that would be interesting yeah. maybe we could do a youtube series off that yeah. um but uh let's jump over to you guys really quick uh and let's let's reverse it uh carlton i'll start with you on this one where do you think uh what do you think is provides the most uh, rousing and uh impactful performance between the the technical and method trees <clears throat> i don't know that's a, that's a hard question because when you're watching it i don't know that you would know the actor's uh technique so if you're saying you know, am I moved by certain scenes in films? I am um, less now than I was before doing this because sure. six years ago and before that, I didn't even, you know, have a clue what really went on on a set. And now that I know what goes on, I'm kind of looking for things that most people don't look for in a scene <laughs> that I should be putting, <laughs> like, <laughs> I should be like falling in love with, you know, they just found the dog. Great. It's great. But I'm like looking back, that extra's got his finger in his nose, really? And they left <laughs> that in? Um so yeah, I mean that's I guess I guess for me I don't I I don't really um, watch a film that way uh, as closely, but I'll say that you know again I think that whatever said earlier, whoever said it, and I don't know who the quote belonged to, but you know whatever works, um, do the that Jack and do one. it yeah. well, and and then do it well, and if and if it changes because of a certain role or a certain time or a certain thing, um, so many things in films that are. That I will say that I've seen it in my in my own in my own career. So many things in films are lightning in a bottle. They're improv on the moment, and they just kill it. They just work. They're not they're not the great you know. Well, I I've studied this all night uh, uh, or for months now, and all night long I worked over this line. It's how it is delivered or how something is presented. Uh, I think about some of these these great lines in films that we all quote, and then someone says, "Oh, that wasn't even in the script. That person just." Right. In their character said that, you know, some and, of them. Uh, yeah, know, some of them for sure. You know, yeah. Right. Righteous dude. I mean, it comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and next, you know, you know, when I say that anybody over the age of you know 30 knows what movie that's from immediately. Right. Um, so, yeah, but that that's that's that character just took that. that 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 actor just took that character and said, here's what I would say. 
And so I don't know, you know, I don't know when I'm watching which, which is which, but if you hear later on that they did that and they, and they didn't do that, or, or they were that kind of actor, it might sell it a little bit more for the, the tabloids, but not for me, not for me. Yeah. And Gary, one of the key components to method acting is improvisation. So. Well, I mean, you have to also improv in like technical acting too, because things don't I'm always sure go do, that yeah. way. I mean, you know. But if you if you if you go back and look at it, and I I I I go ahead and pick on Alec Baldwin again, it's the same thing, you know, uh, because he was such a big proponent of Mamet, and Mamet had also said, look, whatever the screenwriter or playwright has written in front of you, whatever the dialogue is, doesn't matter. You speak that verbatim, mm -hmm. and that's it. You don't change it. You don't take coffee first is for closers. closers. <laughs> Cooking is for closers. <laughs> uh, I don't think Alec Baldwin channeled his inner David Mamet when he was doing Boss Baby. So I really I hope he did. That'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't believe you made me watch that movie. That's, it was a great movie. It was fine. Akasha, I'm sure I'm assuming you you've probably seen it. I haven't. My uh, my daughter's not quite ready for it. Oh, quite ready for, quite she ready wasn't for attracted to that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, she did like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, though. <laughs> oh, she loves it. She loves it. Um, Always be closing. Uh, that's it's a great right. play. That's a great play. It is. And... But, uh, you know, I, I think that's that's the thing when when I'm watching and that's that's true. If we did 20 videos, Gary mm -hmm. and Carlton, that's also to both of your points. That's 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 great because 20 videos with unnamed actors that I personally, Johnny Blackburn, have never yeah. seen before. I think it would be difficult for me to determine who was being who was being a genuinely method and who was being um, classically technical. Mm -hmm. But. From what I'm speaking of, experience is watching these larger named actors who I've seen in multiple films before. Typically, I can tell, and I think most people can tell if they actually, like if they're watching most of their films, not back to back, but if they've seen a lot over time, uh, you can see with a technical actor, you can see a lot of those same, like I was talking about earlier, you can see a lot of the same the cadence in their speech, you see a lot of those same mannerisms, you see a lot of similarities between movies. Mm -hmm into every well, character I mean, like, I, and in and in, and in method yeah. and truly method people like daniel day lewis like dustin hoffman yeah you see those guys and you don't you'll see a few things here and there because uh, we're humans and there's only so many uh gestures mm -hmm. and eye twitches and inflections on per particular words that a human being can do mm -hmm. so you'll see some similarities but not as much with technical I, actors I, I would disagree with that i think that like you're, you're, okay you're, wrong, you're pointing but... to people like, you know, Daniel Day Lewis um, and Dustin Hoffman, who are um, they're, they're extreme. They're hardworking yeah. actors. Sure. Of course they are. Um, like and like we, we saw. Um, but we're talking about the greats. We're but, not talking about. Right, but, we're not what, ta what I'm saying is like we saw the, Bruce, the Wrath Bruce of Wilson. Man. <laughs> huh? We saw the Wrath of Man last night. We did. Yeah. The Jason Statham yeah, one. Sure. And the, what I've one of the things that is I've noticed is that actors they're kind of getting most of them are kind of getting lazy. Like it, cause I, you know, Jason Statham was in that movie and I was like, where do you that, come off saying that? What do you mean? They're well, getting lazy? Well, let me tell you. So like, I was like, I was like, this is Jason Statham. Like he's the same guy in every movie, but like, if you look like he's an action star, yeah. But, but if you look at like, um, um, uh, mm. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, he was in, uh, we watched that movie Snowden, Snowden right. and you could see that he changes his, he, his acting style, like who he is. Like he, he's a hardworking actor, like in, okay. um, Looper, like he mimicked Bruce Willis very well in that. Like he did, he, he's, so, I mean, I, you're, when you, when you're comparing like, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, who's a hardworking actor to like somebody who's just like... <laughs> an action star it's not a fair comparison like you need to do it to like olivier somebody who like was willing to put on all these prosthetics you know and like you know put on like makeup and like really change their act like so i i think that's apples to oranges what you're doing no i don't i don't agree with that at all and i'll, I'll tell you so okay i'll, I'll name two hard-working actors you know i'll i'll bring up val kilmore and like chi what is for mm -hmm. okay val kilmore is very much on the method igf4 is very much you know trained in great britain in the in the 70s and 80s and very much on the technical side, um, both very hardworking actors. We've seen many films of theirs over the years. And while I do enjoy both of them immensely, I mean, uh, I, I can see the similarities in a GeForce characters, even between, even between 12 years a slave and like salt, you mm -hmm. know, or children of men or something. I can still see, I can still see the, the similarities that he has 
and it's evident to me because I've been watching him for such a long time. And I mean, I, you can't say he's not a hardworking actor. I mean, he gives some of the best performances that we've seen in the last two decades. Mm. You know, and you look at a guy like Val Kilmer, you can certainly tell with Val Kilmer when he got lazy. You know, if you look between like, <laughs> God, what the, the, the saint, I guess, and maybe Batman Beyond. Uh, or um what was that? Batman, Batman Forever. Forever. Batman yeah. Forever, I'm sorry. Um, is that the one with the nipples on the suit? <laughs> yeah. 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 And the back I actually did a card. movie review on that recently yeah. on another buddy's podcast. Mm. That was that was a lot of fun. Um but you know, his difference between like if you look at like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and Tombstone, mm. the difference between those characters, there are certainly still similarities, obviously, but you can tell that he's just completely engulfed himself in what he's doing. And I don't know, I <laughs> I can just, I've just, I've been, we've been studying it and I've been watching it for so many years. I just can tell because I've been watching these actors for decades, you know? Yes, obviously to Carlton's point, if I was to look at somebody I had never seen or maybe only one time before, could I tell what the preferred method of acting was? Probably not. Uh, so that's, that's a fair point. And, and I can agree with you on that one. But uh, sorry, so we're we're taking up. Let's let's jump over to Alec. Sorry, panel. <laughs> we're very passionate about yeah, this Gary, topic. <laughs> this is one we've been arguing about for two decades. Um, so, Alec, uh, what do you think <laughs> provides a more uh, rousing and intriguing performance? Um, I don't know. This is a really interesting question, guys. I, I must say, um, you know, you've mentioned a, a few actors uh, already that that are deemed to be method, but I would I would argue that, for example, someone like De Niro or or Meryl Streep are incredibly um, uh, technical actors. They have to be to be able to operate at that level in a consistent manner, you know, uh, because you have to remember that at the end of the day. Um, when you are preparing a character and when and then you, you know, you're called on set, um, you have to be able to deliver at a high consistent level time and time again. And, and you might have an outburst of, of, um, you know, energy or, or, you know, you, you improvise the whole scene, this and that, but at the end of the day, you know, you might get sound to be messed up and then you have to repeat the take and if right. you don't have the the technique available to you, uh, so you can get back on it and do it again, uh, it's a disaster, you know. So I think someone like Meryl Streep and someone like De Niro, even though it seems that they inhabit their their roles fully and completely, there is a tech a technique behind that. Uh, it just so happens that it's so good that it seems that. They are the roles, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah, it's just effortless. And I think that's what they do. That's, I mean, uh, that's what Daniel Day-Lewis does. His his technique is so flawless that he just simply becomes, you know? And sure. ultimately, that that's what it is for me. It's can you, can you sustain a performance uh, at the highest level consistently when you have 120 people around you and, you know, sound goes wrong or the camera didn't get the angle and you have to do take after take after take seven times or 17 times. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's where the, that's where the true sort of, um, being a professional comes into play. And, um, and it, it, it it's both things. I think, it, you know, come into play. It's the ability to stay loose and to stay free. And also to be able to um, have such a, a collection of tools that no matter what's being thrown at you, you're able to receive and give back in equal measure. That's what it is for me. I think that's yeah. what creates a, a, a fully fleshed, uh, a rounded actor across the board. And there's no way, um, uh, you, you know, if if I'm if I'm acting alongside someone who is like that and has those qualities, I'll say yes any day because that's a learning experience for me. You know, you see someone like Viola Davis mm -hmm. just doing anything and everything um, so effortlessly. That, that that's technique. You know, that's mm -hmm. a professional. Yeah, I think every actor every actor has technique for sure, and I think we can agree that oh, the majority the majority even, of actors even across even, time. Um, even Brando, you know, Brando famously sure. is sort of like the face of the method, of method acting, right? It, it, but but he really he was trained 
he was a trained actor. He trained he under a... Stella Adler for many, many right. years, and and uh, he, yeah, you know, he did theatre. He did, uh, you know, a streetcar named Desire before it was, you know, before it was turned into a movie. He was on Broadway doing that play um, yeah. for I think a year and, and, and change. So for him to be able to do that consistently, he has to be trained. He has to. And not necessarily classically trained, not necessarily in a, in a formal school, um, but at the very least, uh, understanding of the craft, um, you know, because on the other spectrum that we haven't discussed, sometimes directors uh, pick people, you know, that, that might not be actors and they, they you know, they, 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 they cast actors or actresses in roles because they are the role in real life. And then, um, and then you, you don't see them ever again in any other roles, you know. Um, and those so are the truly it, special ones. That's the thing, you know. I, I don't think that there's, I don't think that all of these actors, you know, Method ones in particular, that they don't have any technique to it. I think we can all agree that the majority of actors across the world are probably more integrated than we give them credit for, even though they might categorize themselves on one end of the spectrum or the other. Um, but this right. just goes, it just goes back to my point from earlier that if you are the character 24 seven from the very first onset of a cold reading to the very last performance of the very last scene, there's no, there's no, there's no point in having any uh, any technical uh, aspects to it of course technique being a little different um so when I, I guess when i think of when i think of the method we we look at brando for sure but i i do look at guys like like and i bring up hoffman and day lewis and even heath ledger to an extent because he, he got there at the end kathy bates in particular too they were all notorious for going by the name of the character on set doing every single thing that they could to become the character and not themselves mm -hmm. um they were that way 24 7 i mean uh fuck they said like adrian brody he lost his longtime girlfriend and uh <laughs> almost like yeah. cut off contact with his parents because he, he was just so playing the piano right <laughs> and the pianist exactly in 2002's the pianist you know which you won an oscar for um so yeah to yeah i, I agree with you to an extent for sure it's go ahead Carlton. And let me and let me let me interject real quick just carlton let yeah. me interject i i think those things are okay from table read to the end you can get into that like you said the the no showering 24 7 that, right i get yeah i get that 24 7 to the end of the at the end of the performance but i think the ones that go extreme that i'm i always think what i think method and i think this is what the listeners mm -hmm. also think too are the guys that like uh, i think it was nicholas cage that pulled out like nine teeth to play a role of yeah his own yeah yeah that was nuts no, that, that was fucking crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you mentioned what one while ago i think uh, right. Uh, it was um, back in the eighties. Birdie. It, it was a Birdie. movie called Birdie yeah, in eighty four. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And so you've got that. Or you got the one um, um, an actor mentioned a moment ago that stayed out of not only out of touch with people, but he went to the wilderness for like six months to live uh -huh. to get ready for the movie Mohican. You know, that's the Mohicans. That's yeah. A, that's extreme uh, method. That's that's. I understand. You know, being called by the the. Um, the the name of the character i understand you know again maybe some of those extremes but you know when these people talk about their method actors and they're and they're known because of this this trivia stuff that goes out all over the you know social media i i think those are the ones that people say how does that really help you to get where you need to be any other than like we talked about a moment ago just using your good training and techniques as an actor to put yourself there Instead of that extreme, again, we've sure. done like I mentioned, like Alec mentioned a minute ago. I lost some weight, gained weight for some things, uh, and those things. I get that all that, but the extreme method actors that we don't understand are the ones that that, you know, I think there was one actor that sent presents. Uh, I don't remember the, the the one now. I think it was Leto. That Jared sent, Leto, like, the used condoms. Some, yeah. yeah, sent some awful mm -hmm. things to his his co. Uh, co-stars to let them know that he was you know getting in that role of a crazy man you know right um that well, the thing is you have to you know i agree carlton i mean just to sort of interject as well i think sure the question has to be asked as well are you doing this for the role or is this an ego trip exactly what is it you know and where is where do you draw the line because uh, uh at the end of the day i think the best compliment an actor can get at least from our perspective is you know that guy is a professional um sure. that is you know that that is one consummate professional and um and you 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 i mean for example like tom hanks for example if you see him in saving saving private ryan that guy is there and that guy is living you know every bit of that movie and every bit of that character um 
and he didn't lose his mind in order to to do that role, you know. Um, yeah. So it, it all comes down to, I think, uh, what well, we talked a little bit, you know, a little bit about before. It's is it ego? Is it is it or is it a true form of research? Which right. one is it? You know. I think it's very, I think it's very important because I think as we as we have listeners here that are not in the industry and they're not in the craft and they're listening to us, they talk and I think that's where they go when they're when they hear the word method actor. That's typically I think where that fan goes is like how extreme is that? Because I think those are those are for most part publicity stunts to live in the desert for six yeah, months or, uh, or in the uh, wilderness for absolutely. six months or to take out your own teeth. They <laughs> they hear that and they go, oh, if, if he's a method actor, he must be a <laughs> lunatic, you know, and, oh, yeah. and it must be hard to work with with a guy that doesn't make a shower and it must be hard to work with yeah. a guy that gets that. Okay, but yes, I think that, <laughs> taking that, peeling that back, peel that onion back a little bit. It's it's method acting is, is not that extreme and it's not that bad in most cases. And in really, it does enhance the character a lot of times, uh, I think, without going that extreme. You know, I, I it was I think it was and again, I don't remember the quote. I hate doing this uh, in front of everybody because then everybody goes, oh, he didn't he didn't quote that right. But there's an old quote about about a, a early on in acting where someone got drunk to come to set to play a drunk. And I, and I think it was um, uh, Sir Olivier that said, you, you, you don't have to get drunk to play a that's, drunk. That's, that's marathon. Yeah, act. that's marathon. Man. Yeah. That's yeah. marathon. Man. That's, yeah. that's what Dustin Huffman, right. that's what, that's what yeah. happened. He showed up didn't, and didn't then he famously and... said, uh, uh, it's called acting, darling. Oh, you know? stole your story, uh, Gary. Stole my story. <laughs> 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 it's okay, Alec. I yeah. forgive you. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so, uh, so, Aka- so Akasha, I, I want to hear, I want to hear your thoughts on this before we move on. What do you consider to be a more uh, yeah. impactful performance? Well, uh, I wanted to throw in something in yeah. relationship to these extreme method things. Um, certainly, could be ego trip, could be pub- publicity, but it could also be um, a different reason for being an actor. Like hmm. I can, I can imagine, you know, if I had the means to go live out in the woods to prepare for a last of Mohicans or something yep, yep. like I would be like, I, I would love to do that. I have an interest okay. in human humanity and society and what would happen under those circumstances to do that. And, um, and, you know, some of these things, um, that people are doing, I think is just curiosity at what happens to us what really happens about you know some things you know you you wouldn't want to become a real heroin addict um but there are things that i'd be interested in experiencing if i had a a a reason to right but um um and you know that's i think we're just we're going to get get out of this experience uh you know a variety of things and I would also say um, that I actually really admire technical actors. I, uh, when I go to see a play and I see somebody who can control the space and can, you know, use their voice in in non natural ways and still be um, an effective, you know, still embody somebody do both that I am so impressed by and I would love to pick up some of those skills but it's I think Alex accent is is like the perfect example of Mm -hmm. at first it was a technical endeavor and it became a part of him so that he lives it and that's where you gotta you you take these technical things and I think you know, it depends on what the role, if the role is very similar to you, you may not need very much technical work. And if it's very different or a very different time period, you're going to need technical work. And you do those technical things, but you have to, you have to just, you know, absorb them to the point that you do live them because it's just, it's just impossible. To me, it's impossible to understand um, human expression enough to consciously um, pre-plan, you know, or, or do, do everything consciously that is in a full life moment. And so it's much easier to just 
try to have a full life moment, but you know, and, and like you guys have been saying, everything has to be repeatable. And yes, you pretend you try to forget there's a fourth wall, but you have to hit your mark and you can't, you know, touch mm-hmm. your mic and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and no matter how out of control that scene, that take is, you got to do it again. So you, yeah, you have to have, um, even, uh, even though I'm extremely internal, um, I I can't adopt any method that doesn't allow it to happen again at the same intensity that I just did it. Um, So it's weird. We're doing such a weird thing to try to relive someone else's life over and over again. (laughs) Um, It's weird. It's really weird. But it's such a strange thing to do with yourself, but it's so amazing. Um, And and sometimes, Akasha, I don't know if it happens to you or, you know, and Carlton, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well, but sometimes you have to do a scene or a moment over and over again, and you you're not going to feel the newness of that no, of, of that moment over and over and over and over again, you know. And you still have to deliver it at the same intensity, at the same uh, level of, of of I guess I guess you know being as a, a professional. Um, but you might not feel that that magic that you know that that thing yeah. over and over again and that and you still have to deliver you know you yeah. cannot just drop the ball and say well i didn't feel it this time around let's just take a break until i i'm able to mm. feel this it that doesn't really happen that you don't have those opportunities uh on set when there's a crew of 100 people just waiting and you have mm. 10 minutes to finish the shot you know you have to yeah. go yeah yeah and you just do everything you can <laughs> to be able to do that in this on cue to cue way. And, um, and you just hope to hell that, you know, if you, if you drop one that they don't use it, but you know, it is, it's such an, it's such a focus Mm -hmm. concentration thing too, but yeah, it presence it's, it's meditation. It's the, it's the ability to enter presence in crazy, um, (laughs) you know, crazy situations uh oh it's just it's nuts it's it, it is a lifelong it's a it's a lifelong endeavor but anyway who who is the more rousing performance is really what the question was and um <laughs> yeah i mean i'd have to agree that i i'm not moved unless i'm watching someone who is also moved and that does lend itself to being and not performing um but i would also say there are it depends on the needs of like the tone of the movie and one example is um avengers the first sure. time mark ruffalo was uh the hulk i felt like he was giving a really nice nice nuanced performance and mm-hmm. it didn't match the world mm-hmm. and i saw that on the second time he played it he corrected it and i just yeah. i know he watched it and he was like ah cool i haven't done this style before didn't work well uh it didn't work as well as it could have you know and i'm sh- and i'm sure he adopted a more technical or or he just had to not do all the you know he couldn't be as i don't know i'm gonna say dropped in as a real person and have it work in that world so so sometimes it won't be effective to be just the full raw um yeah well and, and i know from, right. you know from personal experience i know mark you know for example he he's He's from Stella Adler. He trained. He's a classically trained actor. Um, oh. You know, he went to Stella Adler here in Hollywood, and uh, mm-hmm. he's actually a wonderful, wonderful ambassador of the school. And and that's interesting that you had brought that up. Gary and I were, um, and that's 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 crazy. I didn't even know he had had trained at Adler School. Um, Gary and I were actually talking about that. We have a we're going to be discussing Phase One of the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe later today, actually. Um, and oh. we talked about why didn't Edward Norton mm-hmm. stay on yeah. outside of money and him being a bit of a mm-hmm. pill to work with because yeah. he's always like wanting to be in the editing room on every project he's on. Um, yeah, and, and he, he's just he's um, he doesn't. His acting style doesn't really right. fit. He's too intense. Book. Like yeah. you said, he's, he's yeah. too, he's too, if you want to, if you want to call it method or yeah. if you just want to I mean, like, be over I, the top. I, I couldn't see Daniel Day Lewis, I guess, being yeah. in like, yeah. you know, uh, a Marvel movie. Sure. I'd have a heart. I'd even have a heart. Well, maybe not Johnny Depp, but, uh, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, would, I would just totally agree with that. So this yeah. leads us Kate, to the, go ahead. Kate, Kate Blanchett is a really good example of a 
Uh-huh. Fucking, can I say that? A fucking yes. technical we're, actor. We're, we're, yeah. did, did, did you just <laughs> curse? Oh my Explicit. god. No, uh, it's this I'm, I'm actually fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm sitting here with my nine month old oh. staring at me as I say this, unfortunately. Well, there, went, there went softcore. He'll forget it. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, Kate Blanchett is. Um, is everything you know she is so technical she, is, she can do she anything is. she can yeah. do those marvel she can do uh the, the role she played in cinderella as the mother was so yeah. the evil i just stepmother. can't I, mm-hmm. and yeah the evil stepmother and you know i know she does a lot of theater and and then you know and then you can see her just just unravel in anything she could do everything well and, and you and see her she, doing you know bob dylan Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. And but but from yet. within that technique, she is so there. You can't do one or the other anymore, at least. Mm. And I want to throw one more thing out in case I don't talk again. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't remember what where I heard this or saw this or whatever. But there was there's this page, um, for like way 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 back before, definitely before the method and stuff of of actors in different body positions that you would hand an actor to uh, hand to an actor that would be like this is the this is the body position to say you're sad. it's it's more kind of like comedia huh. dellarte where there's yeah. like yeah. specific body movements that you Postures nobody bothered going there. They're just telling the story, you know in, in some types yeah. archetypes. Yeah. And I was like, wow, yes. you know, once upon a time, that's that's what what it was. And then our styles changed and we developed um, whatever, you know, probably Shakespeare, you know, um, stuff like that. And then, you know, we we, hey, we had a renaissance and we did the group theater, you know, as time changed. And now what 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 film demands of us and the type of stories are t- that are told and in the way they are told, it demands um, more rawness because that is in right now and it'll change absolutely and i and so i want to i want to corral this in really quick because we are running out of time um and i i love i love these debates when we (laughs) we just we can't stop those are my favorites um really quick is method acting to the extremes that we talked about dangerous should it be condoned or not um we saw heath ledger allegedly from what they described lost his life because of it Spent two hours a night sleeping, locked himself in a hotel room for a month and wrote the ramblings of an insane madman, took all these, uh, you know, these uh, these different drugs, uh, you know, snorted coke, took Viking and, um, you know, I, don't, I, I heard rumors about him smoking meth. I don't know if that one was accurate, um, but you look at him, you look at uh, Kathy Bates and Val Kilmer, uh, they had to go through months of, of psychotherapy to get back to their own lives a year after they were done with their character. Method may provide some of the most, as I think Akash and I both had attested to, some of the most tantalizing performances in the history of film and stage. But does it mess with the psyche of any human that takes it on? Absolutely. Is it dangerous? Should 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 these people be reeling it back, or is it up to them because they are a grown adult and they can make their own decisions? Uh, I open it up, uh, Carlton. Let's start with you. Yeah, I think it's dangerous if you do anything extreme to your body or put yourself through something that you don't really have to do that. Um, I don't think it, I don't, again, I don't think it enhances the role. I agree with what you said earlier. Um, uh, someone said earlier when they said, yeah, it'd be nice for the money to go live in the wilderness for, you know, six weeks yeah, or whatever. Getting get millions of dollars. Care. Why not? That's, that's, that's great. But if you are literally going there mentally to go to a strange or demented place, or, you know, like I said, taking out your own teeth, or whatever that is the extreme i don't think it enhances the role anymore but i definitely think it's dangerous for you to do that and sure. and and to, and to speak earlier there was a question that was put out to me and i i didn't get to uh respond i'll, I'll tell you like my thing about i don't and i don't think and maybe you should say this way audience you may not understand but when we do a scene we're talking about we do that scene over and over and over again so I get that that method actor um, that gets into that that scene so well can do that over and over again. But if it's a crying scene or it's a it's a tear up scene, you have a you have a camera on you on a close up. You have a camera on a wide angle. You have a camera over your shoulder. You've got to do that over and over again. And probably the best time you've ever done it is when the sound guy says, "Hold for airplane," <laughs> and you got to wait for that a trick. Trip, geez. You know, um, to use her word. Uh, to go over the over the top of the of you, and then to continue on, and then you're like, but that's when I had it. It's not like we just do it one and done, and it's in the can, and it goes to theaters. 
It's over and over and over again. And so I think method works in the sense that you take yourself there for a moment and you can do it over and again. Like I said, I, I know women that can cry. I've worked with women actors that can cry on command and do it over and over again. But if you're there mentally where you're literally taking yourself to where you're thinking of horrible thoughts and you've, like you said, locked yourself in a hotel room for, what do you say? Uh, I think he said two hours a night for sleep yep. and then the rambling. I think you're going to a place where even the audience doesn't want to lose a good actor. They don't want to not know who you are. You know, it's like the like the famous uh, 007, right? That said, sure. I'm, I'm not shaving my beard for interviews because I'm not James Bond, you know? I, I am I am me and I'm not him today. He was a role I played. I think the I think the the community of, of fans want to see us afterwards as someone they can go, oh, I liked you in that movie, not sure you're insane, I can't talk to you anymore. Or <laughs> you know, whatever. So yeah, makes any sense. Anyway, that's my two cents. Yeah, absolutely. Uh Alec, how about you? Do you think uh, method acting is too dangerous and should we condone it or uh completely? I think, I think if, uh I think if any any actor uh, you know, out there, any actress is putting themselves in harm's way for the sake of a performance. Uh, is that's just not professional, in my opinion. Um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I you know I remember one of the first things I learned in drama school was uh, a character is an ordinary person undergoing extraordinary circumstances of the soul. And at the very end, what we want to be able to do as as actors is is um, is go through an experience and and tell a story. But if that that experience is uh, damaging to other people or puts you know puts myself at risk, then then you're no longer uh, it's no longer in my opinion. Um, what you should be doing, you know, uh, and of course, some some moments in film have been recorded and they're extraordinary, but to what cost? To the cost of of probably someone's uh, uh, life. I, you know, very famously, uh, Last Tango in Paris ruined uh, um, uh, the actress's life. You know, she was completely right. completely traumatized after that experience. Um, Maria Schneider, and and she was never, you know, she was never able to to do anything else uh, properly after having dealt with, you know, Brando and Bertolucci on set. Um, so there there is a line, you know, there is a human line that 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 defines it, and and should um, be crossed. And right. I think I, I I don't think it should be crossed. I think you you know. Uh, if it's if it's for the sake of research and exploration, go to as far as as your imagination and your craft and your curiosity can take you. Absolutely. But if you start, or you know, if it starts messing with uh, everyone else's sort of craft and and their livelihood, then I think you know you're entering into a terrain where uh, it's no longer a fair playing field, in my mm. opinion. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, really quick, I do want to go ahead and say goodbye. Uh, Carlton does have to jump off. So, Carlton, thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure you having you, as it. always. For sure, man. You and, uh All right, man, you take care, and uh, we'll be looking for 12 Mighty Orphans in theater, and uh, we'll see you soon, I'm sure. Okay, thank you, guys. All right, bye for now. All right, man. Bye. Uh, okay, so let's keep the... We're, we're, we're almost done here, because uh, we do have to... Uh, I'm sure you guys have your lives to get back to. Um, God, I love these episodes when we can just go on for hours <laughs> right. and hours. When, when the episode is under an hour, you know that everybody was not into the topic. I've always thought that. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> or we did a good job of staying focused. Or we did a good job of staying focused. Huh? <laughs> One of the two. Uh, um, Akasha, same question to you. Is method acting... Uh, is it dangerous? Is it something that shouldn't be condoned? Um... Well, yeah, I think we have to dis distinguish between these choices that certain actors are making. I wouldn't call method acting anymore. Um, sure. But, radical acting. Um, you know, yeah. yeah, radical, radical acting. Well radical I, extreme. <laughs> I'm inclined to say to each his own, I would never do it, especially as a parent. I would mm. never do anything that that changed the way I interacted with my children when I came home. In fact, I almost sure. didn't do that movie trip johnny because it was so dark and i was like sure. i don't i don't want that energy around my little kid when i'm sitting there thinking about it but um right 
so I wouldn't do it. And I'm like, anyone, you know, do what you want. However, I would very much be upset at another actor affecting my ability ability to and have a have a healthy experience on set because of their choices. Um, and I'm thinking of like Friedkin, like directors do it too, where they where they put actors in situations that are just not okay uh, to treat human beings that way. Mm, so right. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go for that and I and I don't think it's necessary I like like Alex said you know you're gonna have to limit yourself to where your imagination can go for certain roles right because yeah if you were if you really had to do that for everything there would just be stories we couldn't tell in this world um and yeah. I, I just yeah. don't think I just don't think that the romantic notion of a troubled artist is necessary for someone to do genius wonderful uh sure. art yes you know mm -hmm. I, I just don't think that's 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 the case like think mm -hmm. take a lupita nyonga nyonga yeah. in um 12 years a slave you know mm -hmm. gosh when i heard her speak for the first time after that movie i just couldn't believe it you mm -hmm. know but that was an incredibly immersive performance and there's no way she can actually go live that so you know the the amount she was able to use her imagination to be that, you know, it couldn't be done to such an, such a good, it's, it's so doable um, in a, in a healthy way that, yeah, let's just do that guys. It For is. sure. Gary, how about you? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I think that uh, being, you know, too method uh, or, you know, I, really don't have that with the technical side like nobody gets so True. technical that they put on too many like too much makeup and die but like um <laughs> what if it's toxic makeup? yeah that's true it's true it's just out of date you know, you know? the uh yeah expired the, tin <laughs> the original the original actor who played the tin man in the um in the oh. wizard of oz had yeah. to be replaced because he had a reaction to the makeup yeah i heard that yeah. actually yeah, yeah, yeah like that to it yeah um Okay, yeah. well, aside from like that, I sure. suppose, but like uh, you know, uh, um, yeah, I think method acting is is very dangerous to uh, take it too far because you open yourself up to a lot of wounds and because um, you're exposing your your emotions and your soul so much, right. and you're you some people really take it to the point where they're damaging their 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 soul and who they are, and that's not something that can heal easily, if at all. So I think that it's always a good idea to uh, not, you know, take that too far. You just want to kind of see where to go with that. Sure. And you don't want to go, you know, off the deep end of dark places that you can't come back from. It's like, um, mm -hmm. what was that movie? Uh, what Dreams May Come when uh, Robin Williams goes into the to hell and like he's in the depressive world with uh, right. his wife. Yeah. yeah. And he killed himself. Yes. So, yeah. And he does. And yeah. he does. He And then, yes. And then he ended up, obviously, yeah, he ended up, you know, hanging himself all those years ago, unfortunately. Um, and we still miss him to this day. Uh, it, for me, it's I, I'm, I'm with Akasha. I'm in the same boat where everybody do what you want. Um, if just you leave want, you alone. If you, yeah. And that's my <laughs> mantra in life. Everybody do what you want. Just leave me the fuck alone. Uh, no, I mean, it, hey, if you if you if you want to go ahead and and you want to do that, as long as it's not negatively affecting or impacting somebody else and their livelihood. I don't have any problem with it. I've never, that goes exactly. for all aspects of life. Um, but here's yeah. the thing for me yeah. personally, do I think that performances from, um, God, just from Daniel day Lewis in there will be blood and gangs of New York. And in my left foot, do I think those are some of the, the greatest of all time? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And the things that he did last, the Mohicans, you can even bring that up. The things that he was able to do for that. It just came across as so much more authentic to me. Uh, and it goes back to what Akasha was saying. If the person isn't into it and they're not crying and like your that emotion is emoting from them, I'm not going to feel it either. You know, I might still enjoy the performance from somebody that's just taken it from a technical or mildly method standpoint, but I'm not going to feel the full veritas of it until they've actually lived it. I feel, I don't know. Um, we talk about Heath Ledger and I, I bring his up because, you know, he, uh, he, he, you know, he, he ended up winning the Oscar for best supporting actor for playing Joker in the dark all these years ago. I'm sorry. Posthumously. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Correct. Um, see baby gets it. And yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but it's, the, it's that same thing. Maybe Heath Ledger himself wanted to be, he wanted to be, I don't know, 
immortal if you if, if you say maybe not i have no idea maybe he got to the point where he was just like i want to have the most inspiring antagonist and the most impactful antagonist of in history mm-hmm. and so i'm gonna do whatever it takes to get there and unfortunately he did lose his life but you know um this is the same thing. Everybody do what you want. They're all grown adults. They make their own decisions, you know? Um, and as tragic as it was, am I going to remember his performance as one of the best of all time? Personally? Yes. That's up there with me for, uh, that's up there with me for, uh, Bill the Butcher and, um, Hannibal Lecter, you know, as far as antagonists go. And I will never, I'll never forget it. I loved Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal jared leto's was okay i thought a lot of people kind of you know jack nicholson's is always a classic they're all different but heath ledger's will always be my favorite not because of him passing away but because he truly felt like the maddest to me he Mm -hmm. truly felt like the most psychotic he truly felt like he embodied the character so wholeheartedly that there was no way i could turn my eye away from him i always said that if he hadn't been in there or the joker hadn't been in dark knight the the film it just they could have cut it down by about 45 minutes first off. And second off, I, I don't think it would have been nearly as good. Mm-hmm. You know, it raised it to an A tier level film with just his presence on screen. Mm-hmm. And without it, it was, you know, in the, the C, the C tier kind of thing. Um, sorry, Aaron Eckhart. Sorry, Aaron Eckhart. He was fine. He was fine. Two phase, <laughs> you know, whatever. And you look at that. Okay. The Christian Bale is the same way. You know, he's another in people. Yeah. We didn't talk about him yeah. tonight. If you look at him in the fighter, if you look at him in vice, uh, if you look at him in, um, uh, uh, what was the, the time short? traveler oh. movie where he he like he's essentially anorexic skinny and you can see his rib cage mm-hmm. and um the machinist the machinist yeah. thank you thank you alec um that's the same thing you know he's one of those guys that gets really intense about it and uh i i agree with alec i agree with you and carlton it's okay to lose like 20 pounds and put on 20 pounds and whatnot um you know, but for him, like for Don Chaney, like he, he put on what, over 120 pounds or something to play that. And some of it was prosthetics, but he yeah. did put on a shitload of weight. Same thing with American yeah. Hustle. Um, and then he lost all of it, too. And the 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 actors that that do that, even if I even if I think the movie's eh, OK, I still have to respect the amount of dedication that they that they add to for the technique that mm-hmm. they they were trained with, as well as them completely engulfing their souls in mm. themselves in the character um so yeah sure it, can it be dangerous absolutely do i think it shouldn't be do, do i think you know we shouldn't condone it um no i don't think that that's our choice you know i think that's a conversation between the actor and the director i think that's that's up to the two of them uh, i would just hope it wasn't expected it. sure i yeah i would that's agree all if, i would ask i would restrict it i wouldn't I would, let it happen I, you wouldn't let it happen no. at all well we can only be friends, Gary. Yeah. Freedom of choice, my friend. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, so, guys, unfortunately, we are running out of time here for today. Uh, this is this has been quite a delight, though. I really enjoyed having uh, both you guys and Carlton on. Before we go, I do want to go ahead and uh, every week we allow our guests to recommend a movie that our listeners would uh, maybe like to view for that week, preferably something that falls into the uh, realm of the topic we're speaking about for that week's episode um so uh, if you guys uh, want to go ahead and take a take a second to think or maybe you already have some uh i'll go ahead and go first just to kind of give you an example get the ball rolling um so we talked about actors taking it too far uh you know costing costing their lives but it 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 showed the the true dedication and and masterful craft that it takes to become a great actor um i i think and i think that uh, i would have to recommend i'm sure some of you have seen it it's not martin scorsese's most famous but gangs of new york is uh has always been one of my f- favorite films and it's one that's not talked up there with the likes of goodfellas and the departed and even raging bull to this to this point um Daniel Day Lewis's performance of Bill the Butcher, the fact that he was able to become a master uh, knife thrower and like with butcher knives and fillet knives and and things of that nature, um, you know, the fact that he worked and lived as a cobbler in Florence, Italy for years to prepare for the role, you can see all of that work and the time and effort he put in truly comes out in the performance and 
and it's Scorsese, my favorite director. So um, anyway, so mm-hmm. I would recommend uh, Gangs of New York if you haven't seen it. Uh, Gary, let's jump to you. What do you recommend for our viewers this week? Uh, well, I mean, I think it's for, for the topic. Uh, Marathon Man would be a great choice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. if you it's just called acting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, e- yeah. Even if you just watch the the one torture scene between uh, Dustin Hoffman, who's very, very method and Lawrence Olivier, who's uh, very, very technical. Um, you can kind of see how they're doing because Dustin Hoffman was um, he stayed up for three days, didn't shower, right. didn't bathe, you know, right. and, you know, like so when you see him shaking in that chair, that's actually Dustin Hoffman being that way. Yeah. And then you see Lawrence Olivier, who's um, in, in the movie, a, a Nazi doctor who's trying to get information from him, um, you know. Uh, a dentist is a doctor, you know. You're an anti-dentite. You're an anti-dentite. Which I, 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 I guess... Uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, you, you see Lawrence Olivier, who, um, you know, is very technical in, like, how he approaches the role. So I, I think that's um, probably the best example I can think of, of sure. technical and method in the same shot. For sure. Absolutely. That's a good one. Check out Marathon Man. Um, uh, Kasha, let's jump to you. Um, I already mentioned 12 Years a Slave mm-hmm. and uh, just any Kate Blanchett. I, I don't even know what to mm. start with. But another one that came to mind that was really impactful for me is The Wrestler. That, yeah. yeah. That whole movie Rick just York. made yeah. me go, whoa. Um, the performances. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and actually, you know, Marissa Tomei as a, as a prostitute, like it was so... Uh, nuanced and full and like you know multi-dimensional um that performance and um and um mickey rourke, rourke. every it's just it's yeah i love that one love it good one god i haven't seen that in such a long time we should just do an episode on marissa tomei <laughs> yeah because i'd spend an hour and a half talking about my cousin Vinny. yeah just <laughs> you can watch that one episode of seinfeld yeah <laughs> Uh, Alec, how about you? Um, actually, the one that's been coming to mind throughout the entire conversation has been, uh, you know, if we talk about method and sort of going into the depths of darkness, uh, and not just as actors, but also as a director, was for me it would be Apocalypse Now. Um, okay, yeah. That is, that is a movie that really you get to see uh, an incredible cast go into extreme lengths to do what they do. Uh, you know, you get Martin Sheen being really, really drunk for real and, and you know, mm. ripping his hand when he punches a mirror. You have, uh, you know, the, 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 the backdrop of uh, the Vietnam War was actually, uh, you know, at, this, at the time, I believe, uh, there was a, a storm on set. There's a, a documentary about the film called The Heart of Darkness that explains it all. And they actually did some really crazy stuff uh, on that film that is real. You know, they actually had real hanging bodies. Uh, okay. They actually cut the head of a real ox. Um, yeah, it was pretty, it was, it's pretty intense uh, in terms of filmmaking. So Absolutely. that's one that's- I would, I would suggest watching. Yeah, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. No, I that that yeah, yeah, you know that's actually one I have not seen that in such a long time. Both of those are great. Yeah, that and the wrestler. I haven't seen either of those in probably a decade. I probably should sit down. And, and I would recommend the documentary them. as well. The documentary on the mm. film is extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right on. Is it of the same name? No, Heart of Darkness. Uh, it, it, oh, Heart, Heart of Darkness. Darkness has, it has the same name of the as the novel that the film is based on. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, talk about a, a film with a shitload of method actors in it with yeah. Dennis Hopper yeah, and yeah. Brando and Sheen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Duvall. It's um, nuts, nuts, nuts. I mean, it's yeah, crazy, Francis man. Ford Coppola was, you know, on the verge of suicide doing that movie. Oh, my God. My God. Uh, and you can you and you can tell <laughs> uh, well, there's so, a photo there's a there's a photo of him uh holding a gun to his head and it's on the set of of apocalypse now it didn't he did, almost committed suicide. is he the one that did that to get the the crew and cast to listen to him one day is that or am i i might be thinking I, I, of another story I think he tried to kill himself a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> to okay. Be I mean, just, he, was, he was just fed up with everything and he's like, I'm done. I'm, yeah, I'm done. it was just too much. It was too much. It was too much. Too much. God. He was a method director. He was. And, we, and we'll <laughs> yeah, get into that in our next episode. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. <laughs> one, I mean, one, more maybe, one more maybe. One more maybe the. Um, the Shining. I, I was reading recently sure. how. Oh my God. Yes. How Shelley Duvall was really. Uh, 
shaken up for the rest of her life based on that mm-hmm. um because experience. of yeah. nicholson yeah yeah i no I no, no because, because of friedkin of kubrick. Oh, because kubrick. Of kubrick. kubrick excuse me excuse okay me. gotcha yeah so, yeah like mm-hmm. yeah were they saying that was even impl- even James Cameron in the Abyss? Uh, that mm-hmm. was a, well. I mean, this isn't really method and stuff, but just abusing actors. <laughs> yes, abusing actors. Yes, yes. Same That's thing. That's what we they're about. there for. Yeah. It's cool if no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> mammoth. All right. <laughs> Read everything on the line. You are a prop, and the script is the true form. There you go. Yeah. I, no. Yes. No. No. No, mammoth. I makes me lose respect for Alec Baldwin. I'm kidding. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We really have. We really did have a, a delightful time. Yeah, it was, it was a wonderful good. discussion. It was a great discussion. time. Thank you guys so much yeah, for joining us. I had a great time. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so uh, everybody listening, uh, once again, we had uh, we had uh, Alec White, we had Carlton Cottle, and we had Akasha Villa Lobos joining us here. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, you can. I'm sure you can. F- Follow them on uh, if you guys have. I don't know if you guys have particular acting pages that you use on your social media or IMDb at least. Um, but you guys can go ahead and check them out. Um, look for uh, uh, probably names and links at the bottom of this episode when it airs here within the next couple weeks. Um, go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well and uh, make sure you guys join us. We are done with episode one of our podcast marathon. Uh, coming up, coming up next, I guess, <laughs> is MCU Phase Two with uh, Gary's brother Tom and. And uh, uh, comic historian Jacob Johnson will be joining us as well. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure. Um, and for uh, Johnny and Gary and Neil, who is unfortunately not here, I will remember this. <laughs> Thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Lead Feather Productions podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Lead Feather production. Copyright Lead Feather Productions 2021.